everybody. Welcome to the Monday Sound Stream. We have some news, so we're gonna review TV shows into uh, it, to make our our whole like thing come together. Uh, I forgot the word. The stream. The stream is gonna be kind of cool. But before we get too far in, let's introduce ourselves. I'm of course Sound Out, but to me, my co-hosts. Mon ami. I don't. Th I don't think you can pull off a gambit, Ryan. I, I <laughs> no, no, I, I can do a no. gambit. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, but I guess I can say, "Behold!" Yeah, Fighter Cows. <laughs> so we got we got Jerry Fighter Cows with his "Behold." Optic, and... <laughs> optic, optic blast. blast. Optic blast. <laughs> um, welcome, guys. How are y'all doing on this fine Monday afternoon? Uh, we I can, can we say it's excellent. I can I I will approve excellent because I mean X Men. You're you're a better like, boss than I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, whatever, whatever, whenever Double R does a pun, I fire him and then rehire him. <laughs> you know that's that's good. That's good. I I think I think puns yeah. should be kept in check. I think. I mean, if we if, if we were doing if there was something fantastic for we all we're gonna be doing is foot dive, foot dive. Yeah. <laughs> How many different puns can I make with the phrase, here's the thing? Um, <laughs> hey, how you doing, Ryan? We're doing good. I'm doing good. I'm You're doing eating, a lot better. Are, are you <laughs> eating good, Cass? One week, Fatal Fury. Second week, uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. <laughs> yes. Mm. Also doing a lot better personally, too. So I'm like, Heck yeah. Got some breathing room here. I feel, I feel like uh, last week was a pretty solid week for me, too. I feel like it just, you know. Oh yeah, you got X Men. Uh, I got X Men. It's, it's like X Men entered the world and everything just like cleared in the skies. <laughs> um, speaking of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, uh, on Sunday I was waiting to go to Ghostbusters, and so I just like I was like I had an hour and a half to kill, so I made um it's in the Discord and in guides and checklists. I made I put the entire roster of Budokai Tenkaichi three and the entire roster of Xenoverse two. And then put in whoever's been confirmed for Sparking Zero so far, so I can just have like a checklist tracker of like who could be in the game. There's like a hundred and ninety-two characters between the two of them, so I'm like, you know, let's just just check them off as does they, they get Does Pain Three who has to be guess, or does Zenoverse beat it with all the DLC now? Or with all the DLC, Zenoverse is still like a like under a hundred characters. Yep. All right, it's getting close though. Let's see yeah, Tenkaichi Three was a hundred and sixty-two characters. Yep. So and it's, the reason it was a why record. it was a record. Yeah, it was a record. I think it. I don't know. I think it still is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I think Sparking Zero is going to blow past it. Although, like you were saying, the reason why though is because they count each form as a character. Yeah. Because you can no, select it's... each of them. You can select a character's Watch. form. So. Watch it once Sparking Zero gets more DLC. It's going to get bigger and bigger. <laughs> mm -hmm. I expect this game to this kind of game replace. may actually break break the record. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I think Sparking Zero is going to replace Xenoverse Two as like the constant DLC cycle, um, well, for sure. I think well, my Xenoverse's main main thing is uh, apparently an MMO game. Mm -hmm. So like versus Sparking Zero where it is a fighter. So I feel like they serve two different purposes. I feel like Xenoverse Two will never end. We'll never get into Xenoverse Three. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Um, not to like sidetrack us too much, but because uh, I can't remember now. Um, wait, I was like, wait, how many characters are unique to Sparking Zero so far, right? Um, let me... Uh, uh, um, Katsuna is definitely one of them. And the wolf guy. Uh, um, Tenley Topo... Tenley, Tenley Top in his base form is exclusive yeah. because uh, Xenoverse only have his god structured form. So, yeah, here... So the thing is, like, the other thing with the Xenoverse compared to Budokai... Um, I know this is like the weirdest way to start a stream, but you know, we got a, we got a minute. Uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, uh, with Budokai to Xenoverse, they don't have like kid Goku. They don't have early Goku or mid Goku. They only have like Goku, mid end Goku. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I put the whole, the whole, uh, work into this to, uh, find who is like, you know, if we look at who is only in Sparking Zero so far, it's, uh, Kakunsa, Ber uh, Bergamo, uh, Wrathful Broly, uh, is, from Super, is not in, um, is he not, or did I double up this? I think I double up this. Did I put the other Broly uh, up here? Well, are we talking about Wrath State Broly? Yeah. Wrath State well, Broly isn't in Xenoverse. He, yeah, he's not in Xenoverse, but he's in yeah. Fighters. Specific right. Fighters. Specific yeah, because, yeah, that's right. Xenoverse has only full power, say, in Broly, and then 
Sparking Zero has Wrathful, Super Saiyan, and Full Power. Um, uh-huh. And so there's that. Who else is there? Oh, Berserk Kale isn't in Xenoverse. They have like a weird Super Saiyan 2 Kale that doesn't technically exist. Um, but they have like a Super Saiyan 2 Kale, but the Berserk is exclusive to Sparking Zero. Um, and yeah, and for some reason, Tapo's not listed on my... See, see what happens to make things. I mean, but, what's... Yeah. I mean, what's nice is getting some clarifications from some because I know people could not make up their meme. Um, minds of Kale's if, is it Kale being either just legendary yeah. Super Saiyan or Berserk and it's nice to see no it's Berserk yeah Sparking Zero is like it's called Berserk and I'm like works for me um, same, with, yeah. same with Super Broly it's not legendary Super Saiyan it's just full power yep Super Saiyan so anyways that's uh that's my my dragon so if you guys want to like dig through it and like tell me if I got anything wrong just like hit me up on the Discord it's it's in the Discord yeah uh, I was I was going which you it. can join in the link below oh. <laughs> Um already. All right, let's do uh let's do a roll call for everybody that's here in our text chat uh while I get a couple things prepped here. Oh, by hey, the guys. way, leave a like. Yes, leave a like, a like. Yes, please. Uh it really helps us get the stream out to more people. So roll we call. We stuff. have Master Ben Ranger, Zelchex Ranger, JSK4 Ranger. <laughs> Are you going to put Ranger tracks. on the end of everybody's name? <laughs> no. <laughs> just, it, just pretend they're explosions every time we shout their names <laughs> out. <laughs> Paul Trax, Spin Dash. Mateki T, Judge of Star, Jamie's World, Mass Radiant, Tomo K, uh, Tatoya Tacoma, uh, Sif the Crow, Tr- Hellfire, Paltrex, Kaiju1954, Kyle, Kaiju, uh, I mean, uh, Jamie Carr, and Don Don Ranger Power, and Benjamin Wise. All right, so I'm going to put up a poll. We haven't done polls in a hot minute. Uh, I keep forgetting to do them. Uh, we got three things we want to talk about. That's a man. I'm a cactus, Ryan. Oh, uh, yeah, he's the cactus ranger. He's cactus <laughs> ranger, cool. Um, so what we're going to do is frog. we're going to start with some media review stuff, just because last week was a big media review week. Here's our poll. Uh, just vote for which one you want us to talk about first. Your options are X-Men, Sandland, or Ghostbusters. And um, one that will be definitely sure to compare to the other two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be fun. Um, Starkos is battling the flu. Um, I hope you can enjoy this when you can. Uh, good luck, and I hope you feel better. Um, it, 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 uh, there's, there was so much stuff that came out last week that I was just like, we just need a segment where we just kind of review stuff, and we're gonna, we're gonna do no spoilers, uh, for any also, of these. Also, me, also, another one, one that will sound like a comment, because I have not seen it in cast, I haven't seen it in I, sure. I'm gonna be the other one talking about Ghostbusters. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> The idea, the idea I have is that we'll just discuss each of them for a little bit. Um, JB's world asked how my day's been doing. Pretty good. I, I, um, I went out, or I didn't go out. I went and filmed two shorts this week, both Marvel Legends shorts, um, which should tell you nothing, because I mean, you know, I, I mean, one of them might be this angel figure I got in the mail, who's so freaking good. Uh, those wings, that those wings look so good. They're they're beautiful. Uh, and I had trouble filming him in a short format, but I got it. I and, they, it and he could actually fold the wings up, right? <laughs> yep. His wings actually fold up on, like, all the gargoyles. Uh, let's see. What else is going on uh, this week? We've got... There's a new Godzilla uh, X-Kong movie coming out Friday, so you can kind of guess that there maybe is a... Uh, there's another uh, viewing guide coming this week. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a Godzilla and Kong viewing guide. And we're also we're also going to review this thing on 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 Wednesday. So if it, it, yeah, it possible, us, if, if it was ever if it was ever possible for us to like be in the same place. I, if only we could just film our own version of the Godzilla Kong running on the at the screen moment. <laughs> I mean, that'd be great if I could run. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they're not running. They're just kind of like <laughs> they are kind of lumbering. It's a giant, yeah, lumbering over the place. Yeah. Speaking of uh, speaking of videos, last week we had the X Men viewing guide because I was just too excited for X Men not to do it. Uh, I experimented with what if I make a viewing guide and put a lot of opinion in it, as opposed to like the previous ones. Was like I'm just gonna keep it opinion free. I mean, it's like here it is. I mean, but it's X Men. No, I mean, I just have too many thoughts. I mean, the only real opinion, like I feel like opinion is like x3 because you know, yeah i mean i, I mean, was I I'm, I'm, I'm harsh on x3 but like i also feel like i have to be 
I mean, I mean, X-Men Origins Wolverine, I think everyone, you know, secret, that movie's bad. The best part about X-Men's Origins Wolverine is it's its own separate universe and it doesn't matter. Uh, the problem with X-Men The Last Stand is that you have to suffer through it for the sake of the story. You know what? Origins I... Wolverine did give one good thing. You know what that is? What was that? The PS3 360 game. Yeah. That game was so yeah, good. That game was dope. That, that game, game was, was so good. That movie didn't deserve that good of a game. Mm. But you know, you know what's the funny part? Because that game, that game's story is based on an early script before all the rewrites. Oh no, is... oh, no wonder. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. There, there was a good movie in there somewhere. Um, um also, it reminds me that man, hey, all the X Men, mm. all the X Men themes slap. <laughs> yes, I specifically left out the prior of the X Men theme though because that haunts me every day <laughs> of my life. I don't need, X-Men. I don't need anyone else to be as haunted by it as me, but. I mean, all the X-Men theme songs are just, like, bangers. Like, they're so good. Yeah, honestly, I can't even forget how much I really love... As much as the 90s theme is great, but mm-hmm. I really love that movie theme. Oh, that, the movie da, theme's great. Oh. Da, da, da. It's like, so good. Like, like, every time I hear it, I just get so excited. It's such a good title. <laughs> I, 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 you know, people talk about, like, the Raimi Spider... No, I, my favorite is sort of the X-Men title sequence when you mm-hmm. see the x chain and everything. That was so... I love that um, uh, yeah. so much. Uh, Spin Dash says, I really dislike that The Last Stand was added to the title and marketing really late, felt disjointed. I think the reason they, they said The Last Stand was because Brett Ratner was such a horrible monster on the set of that movie that nobody was going to be willing to come back. And that's why it took years for them to get anything together for X-Men, because he was such a horrific monster on set. Uh, which is also just adding to, the, like, it's not, it's like separate art from artist, but what happens when both are terrible? Same with Brian Singer. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, like, Brian Singer is, like, a horrible monster on set, but at least he makes good movies. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, Brett Ratner doesn't even make good movies. He was just a monster. Um, yeah, the X2, I mean, X-Men United thing, I think, always happened because X2 didn't, like, fulfill uh, trademark acquisition because it's too short. Yeah. Too short. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. If, if, I'm not sure. You know, it depends if how long the stream goes, but if, if we don't. I used to say my favorite X Men movie is Logan. Um, it's that film. Like it's sad, mm-hmm. but like it's such a great movie. I it that's is. Just, I think it's, it's like a... the best made movie in the whole whole universe. Um, the other thing too is uh, not to get too far off. Mister Jiggy mentions that Golden Gate Bridge scene. There's a lot of great moments in Last Stand. It's not like a complete wash, and that's why I still say you should watch it, even though it's like a, a pretty bad movie. There's still some great moments in it. Um. I, I still say the best X Men movie as like an X Men movie is Days of Future Past. Yes, no, that, it, that was like, like it was firing on all cylinders. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's that, that, like I, I agree. And then like, you, you watch the road like, cut and you're like, wow, a better movie too. <laughs> like it's, yeah. there's, I there's two say, good movies out there. I always have the quote unquote hot take of I don't think X Men Apocalypse is as bad as people make it out to be. It's not great, but like I don't I, know. I think it's. I would rather watch I Apocalypse than than origins or x3 i got no, definitely yeah it's it's got its I moments i love that their archangel story wasn't a sad one like it was just like oh yeah this version of angel's just a uh a, a depressed alcoholic uh metalhead and he's like you're gonna give me metal wings let's go <laughs> i did like yeah, it's yeah. One of these where, uh, i think there's definitely stuff like i don't i wasn't too big fan of the apocalypse heralds of in terms of yeah you know, just generic army <laughs> like general mooks but like I really like, I actually really like the the new cast of like mm-hmm. Cyclops and Jean and such like that. I love that also, cast too. I think it's why I can still watch Dark Phoenix because I just like the cast. Also, I I will say, so say that I think Quick that Quicksilver Mansion save scene is like yep. the best showcase of Super Speed because I feel like my problem with some Super Speed scenes is it just feels like it was a time stop mm-hmm. and it just in walking. Where one thing I like because I rewatched that scene recently. Is I like that things were so moving. It wasn't yeah. just oh, I didn't stop and your Pedro was saying me. No, like things are so like moving and emotion. Mm-hmm. So that yeah, I still love that scene. Such a great scene. Uh, my other video last week was uh, introducing the Energon Universe, a reading guide to the new Transformers and GI Joe comics. People watched it, and I'm glad that people watched it. And we'll move on from that. Uh, <laughs> it did do amazing. Uh, last week's shorts, I just uh, I re-uploaded a clip from the G.I. Joe rundown um, with the Cobra Hiss. And then I did the Sandland short that I think was more marketing than anybody officially involved with the show did. So If people are curious, because we'll talk about it when we mm. talk, uh, talk about the series. If you're curious, um, so in America, if you live in America and only can watch the series on Hulu, it's sub only for some reason. But yes. you live anywhere else where it's on Disney+, Plus, there's a dub. Like a, like for every Any episode, stuff, yeah. 
Yeah, and it has the same cast as the game, so there's no like mm. cast difference. No, it's literally the same cast. So like, I don't know why. Um, I just just know. one of those weird things. Uh, I'm gonna give the poll. I'm gonna give the poll until I finish talking about this. Uh, Toyota Tacoma brought up uh, the Star Trek Prodigy situation. So uh, there was a French public TV broadcast channel that accidentally uploaded the entire second season of Star Trek Prodigy early. Oh um, god! Oh god! Not which again. is rough and. Uh, my stance on it is, yeah, if you're in France, go ahead and watch it. I mean, it's officially out there. But, uh, you know, be wary of spoilers. And also, if you watch it, don't spoil it for other people online. And know? don't, like, talk to... Please don't, like, like tag like the Hagman Brothers about it. Because... Oh, oh, people did. Uh, oh. <laughs> Trek, Trek Twitter went through uh, what the Power Rangers fandom went through every year with Nickelodeon. <laughs> similar, the, the Hagrid Brothers always keep having this problem because Ninjago has mm -hmm. a similar thing where it always airs early in a different country. Yeah. And even though the, the, the exactly as Spin Dash said, Power Rangers fans, first time, that was when I was reading, everyone was like, <laughs> how dare you talk about it? And it's like, you can talk about it, just tag your spoilers, you know? Like, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, that it's happens, official, you know? <laughs> it, is, it is an official release. It yeah. wasn't like illegally, but still. It's, they put it up sucked. too early. That was, that was it. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm going to end the poll now. We're talking about X-Men first. I'm sad. Sandlane came in third. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, we're we're going to give we're gonna give Sandlane's to you. So, uh, there will be toy news and, and, and stuff, as promised. We're just starting with this, because I just thought, you know, let's talk about our media. Not Ghostbusters. Do you see, have, you seen, have, you seen the, have you seen that post of Marvel, like, play out the lyrics for the theme song? <laughs> yes, they put out the lyrics for the theme song. It was just da 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 Mr. Stuggy said, if we, did, if we did rank choice, I would have given Sandland second. I'm glad to hear that. Love Sandland. I, I don't want Sandland on Crunchyroll, Jamie's World. I don't want Sandland anywhere near that company. Um, I, I, I I legitimately dislike Crunchyroll more than, than Disney, and that's a... Uh... I'm so, starting to dislike them more and more. Mm -hmm. Santa, Santa, will you cry for the moon? I'm not crying for the moon. I'm crying during the show. Um, X-Men 97 which is the continuation of the 1990s X-Men show. I always like to start with and context like full, in case people don't know for whatever reason. Um, and like full on, like, it's not like full a on soft sequel. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's full on sequel. Like no soft reboot. Or, no, it's like literally this picks mm -hmm. up where it ended. Jamie's World, if you want to know what I have against Crunchyroll, look at all my previous streams talking about Crunchyroll. All right, so this show uh, is, is a continuation of a show that ended in 1997. It has been... A long time since the show ended. This is also the first X Men show in thirteen years since the Marvel anime X Men wrapped up. Um, this was amazing because, like, I, the thing is, when you go into a project like this, you're like, okay, are they just gonna walk in and just kind of hit hit the greatest hits and give you that nostalgia like slap and say, "Have a nice day, kid." Didn't you enjoy that? Um, which I felt like they sort of did with the first episode. <laughs> And then the second episode was, like, one of the most incredible X-Men experiences I've ever experienced on on a screen in my life. <laughs> like, it was uh. it was so great. Because, like, the first episode, I was like, wow, this is pretty good. And the second episode was like, how do I move on from this for the rest of my week? I mean, I, I moved on and watched Sandland. But, like, um, I, the, the thing is, the original X-Men show, as I've, I've talked about in, like, my viewing guide and, and, and stuff, is, like, one of the best written shows in the 90s. And it has such great voice acting. And then the animation's kind of wonky in places, but you ignore it because the rest of the, the production is so there. Never forget, like, never forget the credit, those beautiful 3D models in the credits. Yes. They recreated <laughs> the 3D models, except they actually look good now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so when you're coming into this, it's like, all right, that show was not really well written and really well voice acted. And that, I think, was the core tenet they had to get right. And then on top of that, they got really good animation. <laughs> there you are know, some wonky like, uh, scenes, but this was like a really good looking oh, no. show. <laughs> That's one I, thing I really want to watch a show for. Mm -hmm. Apparently, some of the, the people who animated it were actually fans mom, of MPC. Yeah, mom. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so the they... Yeah, there's a Cyclops scene. There's a Cyclops uh, was, scene where it's like, that's just Marvel vs. Capcom. <laughs> I would say, because, you know, 
So you have to see the trailer. The image is not as wonky as that would be. I just think the trailers are just horribly edited. I think the trailers picked um, the wrong shots for sure. Yeah, no, that because I think the animation is actually really great uh, for the majority. Mm -hmm. I, think, I thought the talking scenes would definitely be, be a low point. No, honestly, there's some fantastic character animation. There's the... there's some fun moments where like they clo they, they do a close-up on a character's eyes, and you don't see their mouth moving while they're talking. And I'm like, I know that they're not doing that because they can't animate that mouth. I know they're doing that so it fits the style of the original show. Mm -hmm. That's and crazy. They actually... It's really charming that way, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I and, you know, I thought like the dream like the three D is not as relevant as I thought it would be. It's actually mm -hmm. only used very sparingly, which is actually really good to hear. Yeah. Uh, and the, the great part too that I really like was that like the two things that this show like nailed. First of all, Wolverine's like what fifth tier of importance in the first two episodes. Yeah, which I'm really, I which do, is I don't so spoil. refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say, okay, not to spoil, but I lo in episode two, Gene and Logan had some yeah, of the best, it, so best scenes mm. together in episode two. I had, like I was dying laughing. I'm so happy that Wolverine's a supporting character in an X Men show. Uh. Okay, I, I was uh, the voice cat, like uh, so, like especially the old cat, like they mm. haven't. Some things when actors haven't acted in a while and you know, they're coming back years later. I thought Cal Dodd sounded them. off in the trailer, but he sounds great in the show. Yeah, Calda uh, Rogue. Um, they yeah, Lenore Zahn is bad. Rogue. She hasn't missed a step, you know. Yeah, like it, uh, they don't Allison Seeley Smith as Storm is already just like the most incredible thing. Uh, and then mm. she, uh, Al, uh, she was talking about on a podcast and was interviewing her, and she said, uh, you know, it's not just you know, she's like, yeah, the updates to Storm. It's not like about the hair or the costume to her, but the fact that like they made Storm's uh, skin color a few shades darker, darker and, it, yeah. and it matched like uh allison seeley smith's color tone and that also the warmth they added to the skin tone just made her very happy because she always felt that storm was portrayed too light in the original uh cartoon yeah 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 i do i actually do like i saw someone pointing out i do like that bishop and storm are distinctly like two shades of skin color yes that that is exactly what what Dwayne mcduffie and Dennis Coe and all the guys at Milestone were like fighting for in the nineties. Was like yeah, not, not every single black, black people uh, are person. not the same skin tone for everybody, right? And that mm -hmm. and they they pushed for that in the nineties, and they they it, it's nice to see that you know the the effort is continued in the present day because that is uh, yeah. I think for me, uh, I think the biggest props I will full, uh, think I give so much is mm. uh, Ray Chase. As Cyclo like, oh, man. he's incredible as Cyclops. He, like, also, this show like puts his... some respect on Cyclops' name. I know, That's right? what I'm so, so happy about. And mm -hmm. someone who always liked Cyclops. Mm -hmm. I always get, like, annoyed when I see people diss him so much. Yeah. yeah, for real. I, I've always been a Cyclops fan. Like, finally, they put respect on him. And I think it's yeah. not even people's fault. It's the problem that we have with Cyclops is that outside of evolution in the 2000s, Wol Cyclops was just Wolverine's obstacle to Jean Grey. In yeah. the movies yeah. and in, in several of the shows. And, and so it's like Cyclops either spent his time being the third wheel in a love triangle or being seen as uncool so that Wolverine can look cooler. And then on top of that, um, we could, we could, um, we can make something like, uh, I'm trying to think of what, what, how to put this. Um, oh, Right. Uh, cause it was my problem with Wolverine, the X-Men, the problem with the anime, even though yeah. I love both those shows, is that Cyclops yeah, no. just spins it depressed about Gene. <laughs> yeah, no, like, I love Wolverine, the X-Men, oh but yeah. like, yeah. man, I do not like, I was not a big fan of how Cyclops was written in Wolverine, the X-Men mm. at all. <laughs> and, you know, that's the thing is, um, cause, you know. Muteki, uh, we have like, had a resurgence on Cyclops in the comics, he's been so amazing through the Krakoa era lately. Yeah, yeah no, he's yeah. no longer, like. No longer X Men versus guy hated that in X Men versus mm -hmm. Avengers, yeah. But, um, and like outside of Kari Moro, like, yeah, not no, this like Noah Nor for other voice actors that play Scott, mm -hmm. but like, I feel like Ray Chase really captures like that leader energy Scott has so much. Um, yep. like every time he speaks, I was like in presence, like, I, I wanted to pay attention. Um, mm -hmm. he did a fantastic job, and uh, his action Scott. scenes, like, the um. The action scenes, there was two, like, incredible moments, and I'm like, Storm has never been portrayed this powerful in anything outside the comics mm -hmm. like this. And so, adding to that, uh, we people were talking about the writing. 
Very high quality writing uh, in the sense that it's very character driven. It may not be as plot driven as like some people are used to for shows, but like it's very character driven, and that was what I really like because there's there's a scene we've in lost a, we... a lot of character driven stories uh, with the way that streaming has made shows so short. So it's nice well, to see that continue. There's a great scene with Gene and uh, Storm in episode two mm. that I really love. Uh, I love. Uh, also, like also um, the writing yeah. on Magneto, someone was like cooking with gas. <laughs> I know, right? Like he's uh, yeah. he's a new actor. That's a new actor for it is Magneto, a new actor right? for Magneto. Uh, he did he amazing. did a fantastic yeah. job. Like God, mm. uh, episode two that like the ending of episode two really like oh like oh man, yep. I want more. I I gotta tell you, I'm glad they dropped two of them because I think if they had only dropped the first episode, I don't think people would be talking about it for the entire uh, yeah, last I week was, like they have. Yeah, I, yeah, because I because man, mm. I was I was super shocked to see how much love. 97 was getting because oh, yeah. like it was actually really surprising to see like so many people talk about it and like even people that have not seen mm. the original 92 series it was just kind of nice to see um because you would all to go down full of marble blah 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 like all that stuff X- x-men nice just hear. brought it just i don't know x-men just made everybody happy <laughs> like... also i mean there's also <laughs> I mean, the funniest part is thanks to uh, I saw some people go like, "Man, we we've been really missing out on X Men the main media because there's a certain scene of the two yep. <laughs> that like so I posted that clip of and this man. There, there, it it brought out the people that side with Homelander and the boys. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um. Muteki says, maybe that's why they delayed it so long trying to make it good. Honestly, I would not be surprised if it got delayed due to animation. Because, like, it looks amazing. Um, and I think, uh, Logic Blast says, I think this show's going to likely go down as one of the best Marvel products of this decade. I agree. Like, I'm already, yeah. like, this is the best, like, Disney Plus exclusive Marvel show. Like, already. I mean, it or really two episodes shows... in. <laughs> but... I mean, it really just shows that it's just kind of nice to, I mean, this and Moon Girl Dale Dinosaur, but mm. I know I'll talk about that and talks with Moon Girl Dale. <laughs> I know, that's the other great um, Marvel show. It's just, it's not yeah, a but, like, Plus exclusive. I mean, it... Yeah, I mean, it really shows that, like, look, I, I, I like the MCU, MCU mm. still, but like, I think having everything tied to it is hurting it, honestly, more yeah. and more. And such, especially, especially like, because they it... keep doing these post credit scenes that they have no plans for. Yeah, essentially, it was it? Uh, there's gonna be like a Wakanda, uh, Wakanda, there's a Wakanda focused... animated show coming this year. Yeah, and that's specifically in the MCU, yeah. and like, no, like, come on, it's like. Because seeing this in Moon Girl Diamond Dynasty, mm-hmm. like, like if you had, once you remove them from the MCU, is they can have the f- all the freedom. Yep. They so want I'm looking to forward be. to that Spider Man show that's coming up because it's also going to be yeah. separate from the MCU. I mean, because that's smart. Because that's using MC, that's like MCU adjacent, but not like strictly yeah. has to be in the MCU. It's similar, like similar to Moon Girl Diamond Dynasty because that's somewhat connected, mm-hmm. but very loosely. Uh, mostly due to characters they cannot use because of continuity, yep. um, and such. Uh, is I I, I like that because it, it still lets them be free, but still ha- gives like new audience who only f- was familiar with the movies a oh like oh I recognize this kind of, like yeah. I think having some ties to MC is so good because that is so the general public like mm. knowledge of Marvel. Kind of like but, how Moon Girls, tr- Captain America, Sam Wilson, like that kind of yeah. stuff works. Yeah, that's like that's good. Or how they have Colby like, Smolders in there as H- as a uh, Maria Hill. Yeah, like yeah. like synergy like that is good, but like mm. specifically being in the MCU is no, that's yeah. too limiting. Because animation is just on its own like production timeline from live action. I don't think they should. Yeah, and I I know James Gunn's gonna try to do that with his DC, and I think it's just a mistake. It's just they're yeah they're different saying, worlds. Yeah. Just keep them separate, you know. Now the yeah. thing I will say, uh, I think kind of to wrap this up because without going into spoilers, I mean I don't have too much else more to say. Um. They they let Gambit be slutty again. That was wonderful. Oh, I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they take away Ro- yeah. uh, Rogue's butt, but they made, re- like, Gambit bisexual icon. <laughs> I, I mean, he always was. I mean, look at his color scheme. The blues man's I know, been wearing pink but and like, blue since man, the 80s. But, like, I know, but that I, crop top, man. <laughs> that crop top broke the internet in so many ways. And so many people do not realize how male crop tops were, like, a thing in the late in the 80s, 80s and early 90s. Oh, my goodness. Yep. They won't watch Bill and Ted. Just watch, Break- just watch yeah. Breaking as well, yeah. Yeah. One and two. It's called yep. Extra 97 for a reason. I remember this one guy's TikTok was like, you know, Gambit's the most bisexual coded character ever. He has a girlfriend who he can't even touch. 
<laughs> it's it was so funny because it's like Gambit. I think Gambit is one of those characters that will never label himself, but like he clearly is not like fitting in anybody's box. He does not care about like he literally doesn't care about being labeled by anybody. And I love I yeah, love that Gambit is like but that. not even with Cajun. I think he likes Cajun. I think he likes Cajun. I think that's the one thing he like. <laughs> it's, only, it's the only label he'll really yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. So, someone said Gambit's the kind of guy to write write on a piece of paperwork. Uh, sex, yes. <laughs> exactly. Is is that Gambit such woman combo from this trailer in the episode? There, yes, is in yes. episode one. It's in episode one. Oh, okay. So that first trailer we got, all that footage was from the first two episodes. Yep. Uh, some of the TV spots we got in later have had footage from later episodes, but like. Everything in that first trailer is in the first two episodes. Uh, I see other come. Uh, Jamie's World. Uh, hey, Sound DD Extra 97 is in exclusive for people that grew up with the original. No, because I was able to watch this perfectly fine. Yeah. And I haven't watched the 90s. I haven't watched 90, 92 X Men in a while. Oh, in a long I think while. If you, I think if you go in with absolutely no knowledge of the X Men, you're probably going to get like run over like Lost. a truck. But yeah. like if you have any familiarity with these characters, like in any media, just go for it. You know, you don't have to watch the entire original show. Uh, it does add to the experience, but you don't have to, because they're adapting the mm -hmm. comics like the original show was, so you can just be like, I know who Wolverine and Cyclops and Rogue and Storm and Jean Grey are, and you'll be good. Um, I, you know, I do at least recommend yeah. watching some of 90s. You can't, like, I, don't, I don't recommend there's a, If you go on the Marvel YouTube, there's a two and a half minute recap. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Just prime you up. Send you on your way. <laughs> yeah. uh, see, Master Ben. Yeah, Marvel doesn't need a Star Wars. Uh, everything is canon treatment. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, uh, most franchises don't. Uh, the last thing I will say uh, on this, and I do mean it the last way. Uh, the Gambit. So people were like, "How does Gambit charging Wolverine's claws not cause him to explode?" Because Gambit charges things to explode. First of all, adamantium he's don't work that way. Uh, yeah, 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 he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's Wolverine. Yeah, your, your answer is he's Wolverine. <laughs> Second of all. He charged them from the base of the claws at the knuckles up to the top, which means he didn't charge the whole skeleton. He just charged the top yep. of the claws. Claw, Third claw of all, toes, yeah. it looks cool. Shut up. Yep. <laughs> I mean, don't you remember? Like, you played Marvel Ultimate Alliance or other Marvel yeah. games where, like, oh, yeah, Legends. claws yeah, eaten by good, Iron Man beams. Exactly, yeah. Good old X-Men Legends. All that yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. What was you reacting seeing just the fully recreated intro? This one to one. <laughs> okay, so like, oh, here's the here's the thing. First of all, you shouldn't skip the X Men intro; it's iconic. Second of all, if you watch when you watch episode two, don't skip the intro; it changes. It um, changes, which is what is amazing. The intro was so great because I was like, oh my gosh, it's it's, and they had Larry Houston direct the intro, which so it makes sense why it's so on point. Um, but like, it was just like I was like, oh, oh, this is this is great. It's just like, hey, look, it's the original intro with these new designs, but then also with these new characters, because they gave Morph and, and Bishop slots in the intro. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just, it was so cool. Like, they even had janky running animation. I like, <laughs> yeah, I love that janky run animation, yeah. running, the, you know, the runner to evil and Exorcist mm. janky running to each other. I love it. Uh, Mr. Snooki says that intro better change every episode. I'm suspecting it will, based on how episode two ended. And we'll, well especially, uh, especially because, uh, so, not even like major spoilers, but this, yeah. the, the stuff that changes up in the second intro are not even related to the episode. I know, I they're just, just like, be... hey, look, Dark Phoenix. Hey, look, Storm taking leadership of the, the Morlocks, you know? Uh, it it was have, like I, moments from the show kind of thing. I do love that moment with Bishop and the Tide Board. That's like the most 90s yeah. <laughs> the nice animation right there. It's like, oh! For sure. Uh, it'd be cool if it changes oh, okay. every episode for like, here's who's relevant. <laughs> Uh, I think we're done with X Men, though. I think we've talked about. I do. I, I, I do miss. I, well, spoiler, yeah. I, still I, I, I do mm -hmm. miss the in stereo part of the intro. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. I. The other thing I will say too. Um. Is that if you if you're on the fence about watching it, I recommend watching it. But I do recommend if even if you're not feeling it by the end of episode one, at least watch through episode two. If you're not hooked at the end of episode two, then the show's probably not for you. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey, let's talk about that thing I watched, but nobody else did. Um, <laughs> all right, so, speaking of returns to things from 30 years ago, <laughs> um, Ghostbusters <laughs> Frozen <laughs> Empire was a movie. Um, no, it, I actually, I enjoyed this. Um so, for those unaware, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is the fourth canonical Ghostbusters movie after 1, 2, and Afterlife. Um, and it essentially follows up three years after um, three years after Afterlife. Afterlife. And I gotta tell you, it's, uh, I enjoy it because I love Ghostbusters. 
Um, I don't think if you're not super into Ghostbusters, you probably just won't like the movie, to be honest. Um, and I mean, you have to be into Ghostbusters beyond just the original movie. Um, I count the video game as canon, Muteki, but, you know, technically it's not, but, like, I count that as Ghostbusters 3. Um, oh, that is Ghostbusters 3. I mean, most heart. do. I, I think it should be, you know? I mean, most they even do. reference I, stuff I, from the I game in Afterlife. 3. Yeah. Yeah. I count it as Ghostbusters 3. It was written and written by the same people and had the cast. Ghostbusters 3. Like, yeah. Yeah. Was, was it? yeah, yeah, it was written by Ackroy and Ramis, Harold Ramis. Yeah. It's like, it is 3. <laughs> it is 3. Um... So, so the interesting part, uh, Mr. Chucky says, to have a throwaway lines explain why people don't think ghosts are real when the Statue of Liberty walked through New York. No, it's actually kind of funny because New Yorkers' uh, approach to the ghosts are, are kind of the way that New Yorkers approach anything of like, ugh, ghosts again. Ghosts again. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Eric said, I got teary when I saw the movie. I got a little teary too. It, it hits you in the, it hits you in the nostalgic heartstrings a little bit. But what I found interesting about this movie is that I don't think it's terrible, oh, but right. I can definitely tell it went through a lot of post-production editing. Um, it it definitely... I'll be right back. Yeah, or, you'll be right back? All right, cool. Um, the, the movie definitely has some of those things where I'm like, all right, so why was this character only in like two minutes of the movie? And why was this character only doing this? And then I realized, because I look at this poster especially, like, look at this thing. Then you remember no, no, then you remember it's a Sony movie. <laughs> I remember it's a Sony movie, and then I also remember this poster. There's like ten main Ghostbusters, and then like several other supporting cast members, several of which are new people. And uh, I think it's just I think there's just too many characters. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, I think most of the movie's problems stem from the fact there is like too many characters in the movie, so you can't give them all a fair shake. Um, so I think they could have probably done with some cast reductions. Uh, just to kind of focus the movie in a little bit. Um, I also think the marketing was terrible. Complete, uh, complete horrible marketing thing. Um, because uh, you see these red jackets everybody's wearing? Mm. Two people wear red jackets and they're not on the poster. Oh, wait, one of them is. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> anyways, they don't all wear those jackets as, like, new snow gear. It just doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> it's just weird little things like that. Uh, Mr. Yuki says, I kind of review saying it wasn't bad, but felt like a compressed streaming show. I kind of felt like it needed to be another half hour longer. Like, it was under two hours, and I wasn't sure why. Apparently, there's a lot of deleted scenes, and they'll be on the Blu-ray, so that'll be fun. Um, I enjoyed it, though, but I also, I like all these characters. Um, or, like, how will, I like how the original will, cast, and I like most of the new cast. But How is it compared to Afterlife? I really like Afterlife. Afterlife, like, I, here's how I would describe it. I would say that, like, Afterlife is your, like, emotional character-driven piece. This is your, we got to fight ghosts and do ghost stuff, but not worry so much about character uh, development. Because, like, yeah, cause I, I felt one that character when... gets actual development. I, feel, I kind of felt that when I was looking at the trailers, because that's what I like about Afterlife, it's just mm -hmm. a slow burn of it. Yeah. So, like, see, and my, I like, you know, I'm a big fan of, like, the Ghostbusters cartoons, and so, like, so I like big boxes. If you like the Ghostbusters classic. cartoon, you're gonna like this movie. This plays so much like real Ghostbusters, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> mm. It has, it has the vibe of, like, real Ghostbusters. Um, and I think it was, I think, I think the thing is, too, is that the weird part, again, going back to the marketing, like, just like with Afterlife, Phoebe's the main character, and why is she, like, down here in the corner? When like mm -hmm. the plot revolves around her, um, I her think name's not, her name's not her name's not Paul Rudd. <laughs> yeah, I know, and but the thing is, I don't think Paul Rudd sells tickets like he used to, which is sad. Um, but no, I mean, I think they also they did a good job. Uh, Welcome, Ghost Trains. I think they did a good job uh, not relying on nostalgia for everything. You know, well, that's why I like. Oh, that was why I was interested in the movie because it's finally something not goes there really. <laughs> yeah, like they throw in some references, like, and this is all in the trailers. Slimer's there. Uh, there's a funny moment where Ray sees the library ghost again. Um, they have some of the iconic ghosts, and there's a plot reason for that. But is the toilet is the Kenner toilet ghost in there? I don't know. There was a lot of ghosts. Um, the thing with uh, with this that they actually had a new villain, new lore, new storyline. They expand the Ghostbusters universe in some really interesting ways. Um, and I I don't know. I really I I really liked it. But I wish it was a better movie because I think that it was it was lacking some uh, some balance. It was like 
there was there was a lot of like balance uh adjustment and like pacing with like how many characters there were there are some people where i was like you're just here sucking up screen time and i do wish that like uh, you know, they kind of did a little bit better job. Like, no offense to, to to the actress that plays Lucky, but I don't think she's had anything interesting to do in two movies. And I don't think uh I don't I don't it think she didn't help that, it, it just <laughs> didn't help that like in in afterlife she was just meant to be the love interest. My mom always says she's like trying to be MJ from the MCU Spider Man movies. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> uh Spindash says, is Peck in it for more than one trailer scene? Yes, he actually does have it, oh, I don't think he has like a nothing. huge part, but like he has a significant part. Um, I think actually, I think Peck has it more than Bill Murray. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think I think Walter Peck got more screen time than Peter Venkman. Um, which does is he ha- still? <laughs> does he still have no? Can't say because yes, <laughs> yeah, they did some. They did a really. There was a really great joke uh, with that. Um, but no, I mean, I really like it. Uh, I thought Kamal Nanjani was funny too. I think he was one of the funnier characters. Um, they, uh, SSJ for Jason, do they reference the painting at the end of two? No, but they did reference things from two, which the, which afterlife didn't. So, <laughs> which some reason people thought, uh, yeah, yeah, cause two is still canon. I think some people thought yeah. it wasn't because afterlife didn't mention that much, but no, it is. It is. It is it still canon. Definitely is. Um, I, I liked a lot about it. Uh, I think I like, cause it's, I think it's kind of like how I like Ghostbusters too, in that I just like it cause it's a Ghostbusters movie. But it, I, I can't say it's, I, will, I can't say this is better than the first one or Afterlife structurally as a film. I will always but, defend two. I'm a I'm a two enjoyer. I know <laughs> I, two has the same problem actually pacing. Two spends like way too much time with that baby. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like two spends way too much time with the baby and not enough time uh, on like know, uh, the Vigo story. Wanna play, wait, wait, you want you want to play some Super Mario Bros. <laughs> Yeah, I know, like I, I, cause I like a lot about it's like I like about two where I feel like two almost could have been a little shorter or at least had some more going on, and I feel like this has too much going on. Need to be able to be a little longer. Um, I think I like two yeah. a lot because of the overall match of hey, let's not be huge dicks to each other. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like the the message of two a lot. Um, I think, um, I think I definitely like. I, I enjoy all four Ghostbusters movies. I'm sorry, 2016. You're just not in this conversation. <laughs> Um, I, don't, I don't even dislike uh, Answer the Call. I just I just don't think it was... It's a, I still I never have movie. watched it. I just don't have any interest in it. it, it it's not bad, but it's weak. It's, yeah. it's definitely has a weak script uh, problem. As a big Winston Zedmore fan, though, this movie makes me happy because they continued his character arc from Afterlife really well. Um, oh, we got more good, good old Asian Prowler kicking more. Yeah. <laughs> good, like, more. I love that Ernie Hudson. I think... Actually, I'm thinking about it. Like, I think it's it's Ernie Hudson and Dan Aykroyd have, like, the most screen time of, like, the returning veterans. And I think they both had, like, good parts to the story. And I think that... I'm glad, because, yeah. because Ray and Winston have always been my favorite Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. so I'm glad to see that. <laughs> I think they definitely played those up. Like, um, again, and not to spoil too much, but the trailers never showed any of this. Um, but it's, like, basic setup. Like, uh, you know, there was that whole thing at the end of Afterlife with, like, Ray saying that he was, like, podcast one subscriber... And so, like, at the beginning of this movie, he's, like, mentoring podcasts and podcasts, like, working at his bookshop and stuff. And I, like, he, I really like that dynamic of, like, hey, here's your mentor, Ghostbuster. Does he, is he Sue just called, po- do we Sue not know his real he name? He doesn't have a name. His name is Podcast. <laughs> they thought they were inventing a Goonie with that kid. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I liked it. It's, but it's, it, it also, like, I can see why people didn't like it, because it plays very Saturday morning cartoon in a lot of ways. Um, where it's, it's like, there is stakes, but it's like, do they ever talk about the death toll? No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, that's just how it is. Um, it's a film about ghosts. But Kaiju 1954. All right. Kaiju 1954 asks the ultimate question here. Would I enjoy this movie if I love Ghostbusters, but did not care for Afterlife? I think so. Because it has all the Ghostbusters elements in it that Afterlife didn't, right? Like, you're in New York, you got the firehouse, you know, you got, you got your busting ghosts, you know, the Ecto-1's driving around. It, it's not so much, like, because, like, the whole thing of Afterlife, it's a story of, like, rebirth and reconnecting a family, and it's, again, really mm-hmm. good. But for a lot of people, like, they're like, yeah, I kind of, where, where's the ghost busting, right? Um, this definitely plays, like, a lot into the Ghostbuster elements, and I think that was the idea, too. Um, so it, it, it works like that. 
And I, so I think if you didn't like Afterlife, I'd still think you should check this out. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? It's an hour and 55 minutes, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it's one of those things where people call this film bad. I go like, is it bad? Like, they're like, are you calling it bad because it's actually bad, bad? It's not or bad. Or just you were not a fan. Yeah, or you Welcome were just not a fan 64. of it. Yeah. I think you can just that's be not bad. a fan of it. And that's that's fine, too. I enjoyed it. But I will also, like, watch stuff. Like, you know, I like all these characters enough. Um, I'm looking at a couple people on this poster. Like, I don't like you that much. I, I don't like the mom character as much. I like Carrie Coon a lot, but I don't really like her character. She's just very mean. Um, I don't, I know why her character's like that, but I'm also like, why are you still so mean? <laughs> um, and I, I also think that I wish, I wish Lucky was a, was a character. She is just kind of a blank slate in two movies now. And I'm like, this poor, this poor girl's character is never going to get a breakout chance at this point. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I enjoyed it overall. So that's, that's it for Ghostbusters. Are we ready to talk about Sandlight? Is Jerry back? Does he return? Is he still on me? Not yet. All right. We're going to have to start talking about Sandland because we got to keep the show rolling. Uh, yep. Sandland, the series, because we're never getting that movie over here. And I don't think there's a point to. I mean, there's no, there's no <laughs> point because, um. It, unlike other like anime mm. adaptations or anything like that, this is just the movie split of the parts. It's not like readapting it. It just yeah. it's it it literally the movie split of the parts. You can tell because I checked the runtime. The show has like ten extra minutes over the movie. <laughs> I think all of this is the opening and maybe like the the opening scene. Maybe I'm not sure. Yeah, they added they add, I think they added more scenes in the the demon village because that stuff wasn't in the manga. So. Yeah. Uh, oh man. Sam Sandland the series is great. Uh, I don't know how to, like, put it other than, uh, as someone that read the manga 20 years ago, as someone that reread the manga a couple weeks ago, uh, this is just a fantastic adaptation that even improves on the manga. Oh, uh, um, man, uh, cause, um, I was watching this with my fr uh, friends, and I, me, what, me mm. and another friend haven't read the manga yet, but one had, and he told, he, from what he told us, all the editions are great. Um, yeah. and like, man, cause it's my first time seeing the story and I, uh, fell in love. Uh, this is some of, this is def one of my favorite Toriyama work now. Um, mm. cause I think I this it. has, it's so good. <laughs> this has everything, like every great aspect of Toriyama's work into mm. one like series. And I think it great. It has the adventurous feel of the Ruta Dragon Ball, but it has some really great action stuff, uh, and character death, like in Z. It's great. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it definitely uh, Rao is honestly one of my new favorite characters he created. I I love that character so much. Yeah. Um, oh, he's so great. I, I love, too, that like it's a shonen manga, but yet you know, the main character is a kid, but he, he hangs out with these two old men. <laughs> yeah, no, well, because it's very similar to Dragon Ball. Dra 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 yeah. It was simply more Bomo's story, and Goku was there as a tag along. Mm -hmm. And here it's similar. Where, yeah, it's Rao's story, but you know, Bia's above and Deef. And man, I yeah. love their dynamic and so such. Great. And I think what I like about Ryle is he could easily just been the old grumpy old man. But no, he was like, you could tell he's a seasoned mm -hmm. veteran. Like, you could tell this man has seen a lot. But yeah. he's not, like, bitter or grumpy. He's just kind of a nice, like, good man. I love that about him. Um, uh, Jamie's World, the reason why Toriyama made Sandlin only a one-volume series is because uh, he, got, he didn't realize how difficult it was going to be to draw a tank in every single chapter. Yep, yeah, because they're in... <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, also, Sandland has a dub if you're outside of the U.S. For some reason, the U.S. Hulu and Disney Plus with Hulu integration doesn't have the dub, but every air else in the world does have the English dub. It's very strange. Apparently, the dub won't come out until April 11th or 10th for yeah, some something reason. like that. I don't know why. Um, um. <laughs> so the thing is, with Sandland here, uh, for, for context... There, it is a 13-episode series. The first six episodes are adapting the original manga, and episodes 7 through 13 are a brand new story where they go on to a new adventure. The Forest Land. Forest Land. Yeah, the uh, Forest, Forest Land, Land arc. Um, so the thing is, is that... Uh, Spindash says, BBTS has pre open for Figure I Standard Pyodramon. I need to get on that. Um, oh, no. The, the story itself... So what they did is they put up the first seven. And the first seven episodes gives you the original manga, the first six, plus the seventh to start you on the new story. I, I do like that. Presuming I, I it's like... weekly after that, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think. I think it's going to be batches because. Well, I, 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 I do like that. Like, be... There was some website that's showing like March 27th will be episode eight, but I don't know for sure. 
I do like that. I do like um, they did that because it mm. gives you. you know, I understand why because you know this again. The first six parts are yeah. were just the movie split into parts, but I like it gives you a nice little peek uh, into the Forest mm. Lance uh, uh, arc. I do like that. I think that was a smart movie they did. Yeah. Um. So this is on Hulu, and you can watch it through Disney Plus if you have Hulu. Is like, it on there now? Because last time it checked. is on there now. It, it popped up the next day. I watched the first two episodes on Hulu. Subtitle timing is really wonky, but I watched the rest of them on Disney Plus, and the subtitles were like more on point. I don't know. It, it might just be because it's done through the closed caption system, so it might just be Hulu's um, like closed captioning system timing is not fantastic. Um, I just pre-ordered my Pyildramon. Uh, I mean, look, nothing would be as bad as Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus closed caption sometimes stinks. Yes, it's <laughs> not. It's not nearly as bad as that, but it's still like pretty pretty off. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, there's a new Code Geass anime that's coming to Disney Plus Hulu. They're picking up. They're picking up anime now. I, that's that's new new. Uh, it's I'm a brand new series. Like... Yeah. Okay. I forgot um, to play the dub the Disney is really good. Topic, I didn't the, the, the dub uh, the dub is really good. I'll say mm. that um, it's really high quality. It's some really good. great I'm voice acting. I'll hear it eventually. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but you know, mm-hmm. um, while going also, I will say because. Um, I got when I first saw the characters, the main characters were CG and everybody else. I thought it looked all, but so, I think Toriyama's art style is simple yeah. enough that it doesn't look too jarring, honestly. Because I understand why they were CG because the vehicles they were right. always going to be CG. And honestly, yeah, the the characters don't stick out too much because again, I think it helps that Toriyama's style is mm. so simple that it, you it, know, it you... translate. I thought I thought Sunrise did a better job animating Toriyama stuff in 3D than Toei did with Superhero. And I think superheroes still look good. I still think superheroes like, good too. I just think Sam looks better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I think in terms of two D uh, integration, I think Sam looks definitely better because mm. um, I think this helps that Sunrise has done a lot of it. Yeah, they've been they, doing they that done for the, years with Gundam and stuff. Years. Yeah. So makes sense. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, mm. If you haven't well, checked it out, guys, I highly recommend watching Sandland. Like at least watching the show or the manga is free on the Shonen Jump app for the first three chapters. So, yeah. Commodore 64, I Disney won't... can't ruin this series. They don't own it. <laughs> um, they have no will, control but, over it. They just they just paid for the streaming I, I, I will tell you, um, I'm not sure you will like it if your only experience with Toriyama is just Dragon Ball. Because yeah. it, it's not like Dragon Ball. It's, it's not like Dragon expect... Ball. It's it's much more... Uh, it's not even it's, more comedy focused. It's an, adve- it's it's an adventure. It's, it's a character driven adventure. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely the most serious storytelling Toriyama's mm. done. It's the most... I don't want to say dark, but there's definitely a lot deeper yeah. themes in it, and which I think really adds to it um, mm-hmm. as such. Because I know it really does shows that Toriyama isn't just a comedy haha funny writer. It shows that mm-hmm. um, he could do dramatic stories, and um, it, you know, it's such a uh, sad to see him not uh, see the series come to light and see all yeah. the reaction to it. But I'm happy at least that he was I'm able glad to he got to write more back. Sandland. Yeah. Yeah, cuz we are getting new stories. And yeah, the game is adapting the whole anime story, um so we'll include the uh the new arc as well. Um mm-hmm. I will say yeah, the only yeah, the only thing they ruined was the US distribution not including the dub, but according to the internet, people don't watch dubs. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um that's me uh pot-shotting fan bases. But uh Sandland series is great. I highly recommend it. Um you know, check it out if you haven't. I, I was showing it to my parents. They never read the manga. I was like, look, just watch this. It's going to be great. And uh, they loved it. So um, I can't wait for more. If they drop this Wednesdays as well, like, if Wednesdays are going to be Bad Batch X-Men Sandland days, I'm just not going to be doing anything Thursdays as I recover. How is it? You're not ta- <laughs> we're not talking about how is the new season of Bad Batch? Oh, the new season of Bad Batch is pretty good. Um, the storytelling, writing, and voice acting is great. The animation... Um, Cut a lot of corners. I'm I'm not sadly surprised. I won't be surprised. Disney cut the budget on that. Thing uh, remember how making... they? I don't know if you heard this, but like Disney closed the studio that did Clone Wars and Bad Batch. Oh yeah, I remember hearing I that. I think yeah. they rushed out Bad Batch season three before the studio closed because they've been have like they had this thing in like previous seasons where they like the darkness levels were a little too low. There was an episode where, like, the darkness levels were low, and then people, like, brightened them up artificially, and then we're noticing, like, guns clipping out of holsters and, like, helmets, like, floating without bodies, and you're like, oh, <laughs> that's why it was dark. Which is just, which is a shame, because they were really good at just see you, because mm-hmm. uh, they also did um, Netflix uh, He-Man, the CG series, yeah. and that looked great, and so, but, you know, Disney got Disney, 
And <laughs> I'm glad at least we got Bad Batch season three. They could have just not made it. Yep. So uh, Bad Batch is great though. That's it's, if you love Clone Wars, you'd love Bad Batch. Um, that's that's what I always say to people. Uh, I think uh, I think I'm going to spin you once it's all done. Yeah, I say when. Yeah, at this point, if you haven't been watching Bad Batch now, just wait till it's over. Uh, <laughs> it's finishing up in May. Um, Scarborough Gaming said, to me, it's the best showcase of his work, art, character, story, and setting. It's just peak Toriyama. That's a great way to sum up Sandland. It is peak Toriyama. All right, I think we're ready to move on to the news. I think I think we're ready to do news time. You ready for news time? Yep. I'm not. I gotta I gotta close out some things and open some windows. Um, I I think uh I think that you know I don't know if we'll talk about Sandland every week, but. If you guys ever have you should, questions, you, about... you should call like uh, every time we talk about a new X Men, you should call it X Watch or something like that. X Watch, <laughs> yeah, Sand Sand Watch. Um, I got to tell you guys, between Dune and Sandland and the X Men fighting Sentinels in Sand and Furiosa it's, coming Anakin, up, it's, it's the year it's, of Sand. It's, it's, it's the year it's of Anakin's, Sand. It's Anakin's least favorite time right now. It's Anakin's <laughs> least favorite time. I'm. Yeah, I love sand stuff this year. I don't I don't know what's up with it. It's just sand. If it's got sand, I'm probably excited about it, which is weird, but, you know. We'll just call it we'll call it Desert Watch 2024. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Krakoa isn't Krakoa mostly desert? Oh, Krakoa is like a tropical island. No, no, I'm thinking Genosa. Genosa is more de- tropical desert, yeah. Um okay. Let's talk with some Bandai news. Ta da! Da 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 da! Uh, for some reason, Bandai took it easy on me this week. I, I don't mind, but. Says say, say by pre ordering Pyodramon. I pre ordered Pyodramon, but I wasn't pre ordering 10 other things. Um, all right, so. Uh, Gundam's 45th anniversary is coming up on the 7th of April. It's like really soon. Uh, I was thinking about doing Gundam videos for the 40th. I don't know if I'm going to now. We'll see. <laughs> uh, for the you, you know, you should, what you should do is if you do Mall Cup Monday, it's just you still live streaming, but it's just you building a kit on stream. <laughs> I could do something like that. I do want to do a Gundam viewing guide, and I was thinking of doing it for the 45th anniversary, but after doing X Men last week, Godzilla this week, I can't do Gundam next week. It's just. <laughs> It's too much. <laughs> Your brain's gonna explode. <laughs> I need, I need, I need to do a different type of video. Um, but anyways, Bandai will be streaming on the Gundam channel and the Bandai channel from 7 p.m. Japan Standard Time, April 7th, a 45th anniversary special distribution, and there is four guests, including Toru Fuya, Tomokazu Seki, Kana Ichinose, and the MC will be uh, Neki Matsuzawa. Um, yes, that means Domon Kashu is here. Does that mean we're going to get a G Gundam announcement for its 30th? Probably not. I'm I'm not holding my hopes for this, even though they have been making more G Gundam merch. I, I don't know if we're getting something. I'm not going to get my hopes up. If there is news from this besides more Gundams coming, uh, we'll talk about it. But if there isn't, okay. then this is the last well, you hear yeah. of it. I, I, I guess speak of dubs and also all that yeah. stuff. But we did talk about this, but like I'm so shocked Gundam Breaker, the Gundam Breaker 4 is getting dubbed. Oh yeah, that's uh, true. With them bring back, with them bring back older actors. Like, wait, what? Uh, that was a big surprise. Mm. That I heard. Uh, can I ask? What? Because I know. Yes, they, they do I... mention G Gundam, which celebrates 30th anniversary. What I'm saying is that all they could end up doing is be like, "Here's a poster, some T-shirts, some apparel, a model kit," and then that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I I've it... seen them hype things up that are nothing so many times that I don't think I get excited anymore. Cock- Never forget Cocker Ranger. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, the Cocker Ranger 30th. They a whole big announcement just for yep you can go meet the cast if you're in Japan. Um, uh, I know Reku Avengers is the CG. Smith the Crow. I dropped one? I dropped all the uh, the the Gunpla uh, model kit news just because last time I talked about Gunpla like the chat just went dead silent on me. <laughs> I didn't want to like have dead space like that again. Um, but uh, I think question. we'll talk about Psycho Mark II when it gets full pictures and not just a gray proto. I'm question excited about for, that. Though. Anyways, yeah. For- uh, because I know Reco of Vengeance is the upcoming CG film. What's yes. Silver Phantom? Silver Phantom is the trailer. upcoming VR film for Meta Quest Two. Oh, oh boy, what <laughs> VR film? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I know. We got an Unreal Engine Five show coming to Netflix called Requiem for Vengeance. It's a one-year war story, and then Silver Phantom is a VR uh, Meta Quest Two exclusive film that takes place during uh, Double Zeta era because it's in a it's in a three sixty cockpit setting. 
you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I don't have any way of watching that, so... Anyways, we'll see. I want some gun news that's tasty, delicious, and not just more merchandise, because I feel like that's all we've been getting. That's all you life. get. That's, yeah, that's all, you, that's all you always get. I feel like we keep getting just merchandise lately and not oh. like, something tangible. Kaos, well, you're back. Welcome back, Kaos. Uh, Sandland. Sorry, you missed Sandland. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but hey, we're so about to move on from Gundam 45th anniversary stuff. There's a stream coming up. You excited? Well, I love Gundam, so. I mean, I love Gundam too. I just how many how many of these late night Gundam streams have you ever watched that just ultimately result in nothing? Because I've I've done like four oh, of them in a row, and I that's true. A lot of them are just like here's Gunpla that you already either you already knew or yeah. Here's like a special clear version. But Amaro, Delmon, and Suleta again. will be there. <laughs> okay. Also, I don't know if this is coming out in English either because. Uh, there, there's no article like this on the English Gundam info. This is on the Japanese. I don't one. think so. I don't think so. I think they're not going to sub it for us again. I remember when they announced Iron Blooded Orphans and they had a live interpreter, and that was the coolest freaking thing ever. Because I actually felt like I was watching something and not just trying to interpret what was being said. And they never did it's it again. Kind of weird because Gundam was like really good with the localization stuff, like what it was Ultraman like now. But they just yeah. kind of stopped recently. I don't know what it happened. It was is after that... the Bandai Namco merger. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yep. All right. We I pre-ordered it already. <laughs> so let's talk about <laughs> it. It is the figureized standard amplified Pyildramon. I have no idea why they announced this at Digimon Con as a teaser and then a week later just show it. Like, why didn't you just show it at Digimon Con? I like, know, but oh man, look at him. Look how pretty it is. So what's cool about this is we have a new design, uh, like a lot of the amplifieds are. Uh, this time it is done, we know the artist, the artist is Asmaria, who does a lot of art for the Digimon card game, and recently did those Digimon X uh, special editions. You can see that we've got extending oh. barrels on the Desperado Blaster, which is a new feature. I love that. So cool. Uh, you can combine them into one long rifle, which is just amazing. What? Wing gun. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, full articulation that you would expect, including ball-jointed fingers, just looking amazing. Um, you've also got the, uh, the spikes on the arms can shoot off, and they have a wire attachment. I uh, love that. Well, that's cool. It's so freaking amazing. Uh, I and then... Fall apart. He just looks big and beefy. You can put him in his classic, like, reference art pose, which I love when they do this. <laughs> They're like, look, reference art pose, and I'm like, yeah! Um, I'm in the middle of building Metal Greymon right now, and I was like, I'm like, this is like the coolest kit I've built. I, I still think Shine Greymon's my favorite amplified kit, but Pyildramon might take the cake. I, I can't wait does to it, this. Question, does it literally just use a sprue from uh, Machine Greymon? I don't arm? think it does. It has like the same sculpting really? for the metal arm, but like, on that is like Metal Greymon specific parts. Interesting. So I, I don't, I, I'd have to compare, but um, I think they're slightly different. But anyways, I used to be like, nah, I don't want amplified kits. And then they started doing stuff like this where it's like, look, it's the anime design, but with more details, and we added a feature. I think because, especially since, um, you know, the previous ones were characters that has done so much in yeah. merch that you feel like they need to heavily redesign them. But Machine Dramon, Shine Greymon, Metal Greymon, and Pyil Dramon are all things I didn't have fancy figures of. Yeah, so they feel like they, they're a little more... Closer, but still mechanized to keep the theme of the line, which yep. I I do like. Um, I'm not saying those uh, previous ones are bad. No, I love some of those uh, amplified designs. But like, I, I just like wasn't interested in spending sixty bucks on a War Greymon that again, again, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I drop yeah. I drop money for Machine Dramon. I drop money for Shine Greymon, and I'm I, I bought Metal Greymon, and now I'm ready for. It is fine. Yeah. I'm just glad we're finally out of <laughs> we're finally out of the, the same like five characters yep. now. <laughs> I very happy about this. Uh, the next figureized standard common rider kit is Ultimate Kuga. Sorry, people who want Raywa only. We're going we're back back to yep. the start for Heisei. <laughs> back to the start for Heisei. He looks great. But look how cool oh. this is, and this is what I like about figureized standard, and why I think I haven't bought as much Gunpla lately. In addition to just having a huge ass backlog and got oh, tired of building the full, same kind of robot designs, it's stuff like this. <laughs> Full color <laughs> separation. The color separation, because War Gray cool. or um, Metal Greymon does the same thing, where the blue parts, like the blue stripes, are all plastic layers, and the ore just has cutouts for it, so it just slots in. I love this. Look at this. 
If if you were building this kit like ten years ago, they would have made you sticker the gold outline. Yep. Instead, uh, they're like, "Look, great. gold plate," and you put the black armor on. He looks so good. Uh, I do love that. Uh, there's a video that's like reverse because there's like a video where you see it assembled. I love mm. people playing it backwards, like explode your kuga. <laughs> explode your kuga. He also comes with the dark eyes, so it's not a separate figure. Freaking Tamashi figure arts and uh, <laughs> fire effects for uh, lighting things on fire and a stand. Uh, this looks fantastic. I wish I was collecting these instead of figure arts, if I'm being honest. Uh, I've been collecting these, and I seem to need to catch up because I'm still several Kamen mm. Riders behind. But, like, yeah, but I'm excited to get this. Um, uh, Kyle mentioned the... they update the site, and it includes teases of show on Raywalk kits. Oh, and Spin Dash mentioned oh, nice. that as well. So, yay. Okay. It's beautiful. Look at him. All right. Uh, he comes out in September, I think also when Pyle Dramon comes out. All right, our only figure arts news. We there was a teaser, but we'll just talk about it when it gets revealed because it'll be soon. Um, SH Figure Arts Commander of Alvarad is a uh, Tamashi Web Shop exclusive. Uh, no surprise since Majed and literally every other Gotchard figure art besides Gotchard was. Um, he comes with a sword. He's got you know his new design. This is writer form versus the uh, alchemist armor form, and nice. boy that trio looks nice, nice together. I I think I'm gonna get the trio, guys. I mean, I'm How glad nice they are. <laughs> I'm, gl I'm at least grateful, even though like I'm not too big on Gotchard's design aesthetic. I'm at least grateful they're like they're slow with riders because we only got the main three and like two like what and, two one off guys. Yeah, no well, three one off guys. No one one off guy, two one off guys, and then Dread, who's like a consistent villain. Yeah, yeah, but it's only three like, main riders. That's not, nice like, to see. Eight. Like, God just doesn't click with me, but, like, I'm at least glad that they're slowing down, mm. at the very least. I love that the show was like, it's like Pokemon meets Yu-Gi-Oh! And they're like, just kidding, it's Digimon. Like, Kemis are not Pokemon, they're Digimon. They they can Digivolve now. <laughs> Pokemon, like, uh, and come back. Oh, hey, well, you think, the biggest thing is he can go back to... Yes, uh, well, Hopper, Hopper 1 turns into Cross Hopper, and then he turns right back into Hopper 1. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I think, uh, because the one-offs is, oh yeah, yeah, speaking of one-offs, he's not a one-off anymore, Common Rider Legend's getting a power-up, it's a gun that turns into his face, and it takes cards, and it goes into his belt, you a reminder that that belt is still the same decade belt mold from 2009, um, yeah. anyways, if you're into Legend, uh, you got a belt, you got a new power-up option, uh, yeah, I'm not, yeah. Yeah, I'm not never fine. into I'm not into the gaudy the current gaudy designs of Gotcha, but I feel like Legend's like the essential because I feel like he's meant to look gaudy. He's supposed so to be, like, yeah. Like his whole personality is gaudy. He just so goes around calling things gorgeous and telling people. They yeah, don't yes, I don't mind his design yeah, as he's much. Great. Yeah, I mean, not, I mean, hey, look, nothing would beat the the, the the tissue paper cape with cards stapled yeah, yep. onto it. <laughs> Decade twenty one. <laughs> um. Yeah, so this is kind of neat. Uh, it there also will be a bundle with the legend driver and the, the blaster if you if you want. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention Valverod's on P Bandai US. All right, and then lastly for Bandai news, and you know when we're already done with Bandai news after like what ten minutes, <laughs> not even. <laughs> you know it's a slow week. Uh, the Millennium Ring Complete Edition, um, which is a big old gold shiny Millennium Ring. It's got voice lines and music related to Bakura. Um, I don't think the points actually move. I think they just dangle. Uh, and yeah, like Muteki mentioned, for some reason this was on P Banda US for about nine hours, and then they took the page down. Not just uh, that it sold that out; they like straight up took the page down. I would say that's a big whoops uh, question. Like, does that mean people like did order? I, did I they have get, no like... idea who if anyone bought it and if their orders got canceled or something. But it just like it opened some, late, I... and then it it was gone. Because I'm assuming it has to be some kind of, like, uh, rights, like... Because uh, we didn't get the puzzle blah, blah, blah. or the rod, I don't think. So, no. The only thing we got was yeah. the mall kit. The mall kit Millennium Puzzle. Yeah. But so far, there's three of these things. So far, there's three. Are they going to do so the other left? four? Well, because there's, what, the eye? The eye. The scale. Yep. What are the other two again? I forget what the other two. The eyes and the scale. Millennium, 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 scepter, millennium. The necklace. Ring. Millennium the Puzzle. Ring. Yeah. Of course. Because the necklace is the necklace called the ring. Millennium. Wait, no, the yeah, ring. Yeah, no, 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 okay, no, the necklace. The ring. Yeah. No, the key, the, key the necklace, the scales, and the eye are the four we're missing. 
How did you do that? I think they're going to pack the... Like, I mean, they're just going to put a little sound box in there so that Pegasus can, like, yell at you, right? Well, you can't... You don't want... So you don't want... Well, you, oh, <laughs> like, you can't just... You into your eye. I mean, look, you just travel to Egypt and you and you find a guy in a pyramid and say... I mean, that's how Naruto teaches me how you... Yeah. Open your eye. Yeah, just open your eye and well, just shove no. it in, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, shove the other eye in. So, I mean, they could pack the eye, the necklace, and the key together. The scale might be hard to do. <laughs> Scale's uh, probably going to be its own separate thing. Yeah. The scale will come with the sarcophagus lid that you can put them all in. <laughs> he, 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 like, accurate sky, scale, so it'll be human size. So that'll be, like... Um... <laughs> I mean, we say this as a joke, but, like, I've seen Bandai do some crazy stuff. Okay. Um, if we let's... get that, we better get. If we get yeah. that, we better get the. Uh, we better get the Jacka chambers if they do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I would buy a Jacka chamber and just replace my bed with it. How <laughs> the shipping? I don't want to know what the shipping that would cost. <laughs> I just put it on P Bando US. It's an Asian Mori production. We can do that, right? Um. All right. Guess what, guys? You know what time it is? It's time for Transformers news. Oh, you should have said that with the Yu-Gi-Oh section so we can say it's time to... See that's, see, that's what happens when I don't have a Yu-Gi-Oh section. I just lump it in with Bandai. <laughs> All right, it's not Bandai news. It's Hasbro toy news. Okay, so Hasbro confirmed that new packaging design is coming for collector's brands, including Transformers this fall. They are bringing Windows back. Uh, for context... Uh, fu uh, fully, because... They, they already started fully. doing that, because here's Angel's box, and it's got a big old window on it, and, it, it, you know, they went straight back to the old design. But they're rolling out new designs. And something I noticed, because uh, they pointed to examples of, like, look at the Night Creeper. And then they said, you know, look at our new Star Wars box, which is, you know, like that. And the new Marvel packaging they pointed to was this Wolverine and Spider-Man set, right? These look a little bit smaller. Not This is a horrible example, because there's just, like, so much space. They look a little bit smaller. They have a window. But my favorite part about them is they're squared off and even. Because, I gotta tell you guys, as someone that sometimes Marvel keeps boxes, boxes around, I hate this Marvel? curve thing. Yeah. yeah. It's the Me worst. I, the last time I bought a wave of Marvel Legends in hand, like, it was like four years ago, because I haven't found a whole wave in forever, but... Well, well, wait, what about the, the, midnight, the, the, not the, mid, the midnight Sun? Oh yeah, Sun that's a good Sun example. Sun. When I got the, mid, the Marvel Knights wave in with all seven of them, I, I pull them out and I stack them up and they just slid right off. Because they're all angled. And I hated it. The one thing I liked about the Plastic Free was that they were square and even. These are going I mean, back to a square and even box style. Especially for Star I, Wars, because I've hated that little angle thing, too. I would say that, um, while I'm fully, you know, like, all good for the windows back, I, man, the suit packing sucks. <laughs> it's so boring. It is. I, I, do, so... I do think there is a way to reduce plastic and packaging, like 100%. Like, I... I yeah, could do without a plastic else. tray inside. I think the cardboard tray idea they had for G.I. Joe where they tied the figure down with cardboard should just be applied across the board. I think that'd be great, you know. But keep the I plastic mean, window because the windowless packaging did not work, uh, whether it was closed face box or open face box. That It was just a disaster across well, the board. Well, what's frustrating, every other company has done the, the plastic, some plastic free stuff better, like Bandai yeah. or Mattel and all that. And stuff mm -hmm. like they ain't done it better so the see hasbro like not learn from them it's frustrating <laughs> pure corporate um, hubris at the end of the day um mr yep. says actually square packaging you can see if someone switched it on you but how will they make it a frustrating experience now oh uh, you know prices i think uh, like, it's also, going, I, think, I mean thing i'll definitely miss the most is go buy, which also fits with the, like last week's news or was the week before is mm -hmm. um no bye bye artwork Goodbye, goodbye, unique artwork. That's I something I did there. notice too. Yeah, uh, that's let's talk about that. Where did the art go? Uh, for Marvel, this isn't new that they just reuse art on the packaging, but GI Joe had been known for the artwork on the packaging, but now it's just product renders. And here's the thing: at one step, I'm like, man, that sucks. But then also, like second step, they fired all their artists. Third step. I can now throw the boxes away and not feel bad. Because I have every G.I. Joe classified box since the line started, which is now over 120 of them, and I can't get rid of them because I want to keep the artwork, but the artwork is, like, on multiple sides of the box, so I don't exactly know how to, like, you know, scan it or keep it. And, um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm fine with the art going in that sense, because now I don't have to keep these boxes around. I mean, I guess that, yeah, but it's like, still sucks, because goodbye, artists! Yep. <laughs> Uh, Spin Dash says, I once again remind Has that Hasbro did plastic-free perfectly with the, pe the Pulse Pudgy Pig. That was a good way to do it. Yeah. 
I think I think G.I. Joe did a good job too. I think G.I. Joe just needed a window to show the figure. You know? Mm-hmm. Um but anyways, that's that. Let's go to Transformers news, guys. So, on Thursday, we had our third Transformers 40th anniversary stream. All right, moving on. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I did this gag last week. I just, I, 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 I just think, I, it, I'm like, I, I think it's funny, but it's not. It's sad. Well, it's, it's not. It, it, I'm kind of getting sick of it because I feel, I'm, I, feel I feel bad for bad. these guys. But like, legitimately, do we like? They did up close looks and talks about the designs of these figures. But people have owned Cheetor and Shard and Gears and uh, Chromia. Counterpoint, and... counterpoint, counterpoint. It's still yeah. nice to know. It's I, still nice to oh. know. I, I know that. But my point is, is that it's not their fault, but Hasbro made all these streams completely worthless. Because it's great to hear them talk about the design. It's frustrating to them to say, oh, we know people want the cartoon head on Sandstorm. We'll try to get it out there somehow. Because I don't see how they do that without it being a selects or a multi-pack or something, right? Mm -hmm. We did find out Shard was a female character. That's cool. But the problem I have, and it's the same problem that I've had this whole time, and they also showed Origins Wheeljack, who had already sold out uh, by the time this stream happened. The problem I have is that this should have been one stream at the beginning of the month and shown us all this stuff, and that should have been it. Dragging it out. Like, I... It was, I saw this cute photo where someone had their silver bolt, their star scream, and their gears sitting down to watch the stream. And that is when you've, we've got completely off track of what the marketing should be for Transformers. When you, when you have people that are like, oh yeah, I went and bought these at my store and they're watching the stream with me. It, it just makes you look ineffectual as a company, you know? And it's not any of these guys' fault. These three guys, they're not I to mean, blame at all. You, that's the thing, because, you know... I understand. It's, it's. I understand that half of these are leaks, and I know I mean, that's this all, case. All of these leaks, but yeah, all of them, and and so people have them. But like, I, 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 I like, like hearing them talk stuff. about the design stuff yeah, as well. The whole, the whole yeah. thing, like the thing that I, I like, they I talked about Gears' people, chest design. That was cool. Yeah, I, the thing yeah. I'm hope people watch these. It's, it's the classic on Nintendo Direct. I hope people watch these streams, not just to see new toys, but to actually hear the design, like. What I need for aspect. them to do is I need Hasbro to be more honest because they keep saying tune in for reveals and people who aren't paying attention like we do are thinking there's going to be reveals. And there is, but they're not reveals that, you know, the problem is, is that there was nothing that we hadn't already seen in this stream. And uh, that's the part that I think bugs me is that they, they, they have them up as live stream. I think instead what they should do or they, what they should have done was done a nice, highly produced video of them talking about the designs and call it like behind the scenes of Legacy United they, Wave they, Two because Lego Lego does that with theirs. So yeah, they'll. Get, I love that stuff. Like, and, That's the kind yeah, of stuff like, I, I I like watching. Um, but at nine a.m. during a live stream, I don't really know if I care as much. <laughs> That's I, I, I think the problem is is the the presentation format. And we're not trying to sound rude. I really, because I, I, I was really enjoy watching the shooting, not just to see the toys, but I like yeah. Mark, Evan, v- Mac. They're like, mm. they're, 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 I do too. they're fans. They're fans of the stuff also. Like, and that's, I think we have some of the best people working on Transformers right now because of them. And, and then they're getting screwed over by corporate mandates. Yeah. And it just sucks that Hasbro screwing them over like this. Yep. And then we found out there's no toy reveals next week. So no studio so the studio series stuff so that means the studio series stuff is not gonna get announced then. That means the studio series stuff that you can buy in stores will not get announced until WonderCon at the earliest, which is at the end of March. I think it's or is it the end of April? Let me go look this up. Hasbro announced uh, they're going to WonderCon for some reason. They never go to WonderCon. They're just like, let's I was go. Say, they, usually Hasbro always goes to like San Diego and Twitter. Yeah, they're that's... like, let's go to WonderCon. WonderCon is March 29th to 31st. And so that'll be after the next stream, right? Because that'll be the Friday after. My browser just froze, so we're just going to sit here and talk. Um, oh, here we go. So they are going to WonderCon. And I think they're going to have to reveal Studio Series stuff there, right? Uh, BMAC did say they are going to reveal one of his favorite products of the year next week. So there might be... I, I'm guessing it has to be like a collaborative thing or something, you know? Mm-hmm. But he said is they're going to talk it- about... What is it that they're going to talk about? I don't know if anybody wrote it down. Next week, pop culture focus stream. 
And then in one, uh, yeah, they did. Okay, that's right. They did confirm attending WonderCon in Anaheim. Uh, there will be a panel with a studio series focus. So we will see studio series at WonderCon. Uh, so the crow, yes, they did do uh, Red Fall and Jet Ocarina. Oh, you can combine them with Jetfire. Yeah. Um. Um. So the thing with uh, so the thing with this, I don't even know if I'm going to watch next week's stream. To be honest, I think I'm just going to sleep my normal time. I don't. Why? Why have I been getting up early for these? It's been kind of my my frustration, you know. Well, you, well I mean, you didn't need to. You could just watch it after. I mean, there's back. the only reason I watch them live is so I know if I need to pre order anything. And let's talk about that because all oh, that's the uh, one thing that came out of this is we finally got our pre orders for Legacy United Wave Two. And um, here's the thing, okay. Uh, several stores like Big Bad Toy Store stocked things the next day. Like people already had Starscream in their pile of loot. And, for example, the following day, someone found Cheetor at their Target in the U.S. And Hasbro Pulse put up the pre-orders on the 20, was the 21st, and they say they're coming out April 1st. Like, they could have just been in stock orders, you know? But for me, I only ordered Silverbolt because I just couldn't, you know, manage anybody well, else gonna, right after this happened. You're, you're, you're not going to order Cheetor? <laughs> I was, but I literally just don't have the 10 bucks to do it. <laughs> I, there's too much other stuff happening right now, you know? I was like, I need to get my Silver Bolt. And so I ordered Silver Bolt. Uh, adding to this, the blaster that was previously announced uh, and was supposed to have a May 1st release date is street dated for March 31st at Target. So people have been finding them, but you can't buy them until the 31st. And Unless in case you, you're you know, thinking Magmatron's going to take till July, Hasbro Pulse Germany and Pulse UK have moved the dates to March 27th and April 10th, respectively. I'm not surprised because I think there was an in hand. I think it was China that had like an in there was hand. an in hand event in China. I I thought I had the link for it. Apparently, I didn't. There was an in hand event in China, officially licensed by Hasbro, and they had Studio Series uh, Bumblebee Shockwave, Shockwave there. and so, Magmatron and Magmatron and Tidalwave. I, I yeah, <laughs> and they're fine. Yep. I read those are fine. <laughs> I want most of Legacy Wave too. By the way, I just could only order Silver Wolf because they're coming out like before I get paid again. So well, that or they're already out. <laughs> or they're already out. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I don't like being bummed out about Transformer stuff, but, cause I'm excited about the toys, but it's just exhausting trying to like manage, like covering it on the show. You know, I wish we could just talk about the reveal streams and that was it, you know? Um, because there's, with Transformers doing Legacy, there really is no reason they can't just tell us what the next two waves are like, ahead of time or something, you know? Like, they don't need to wait for media to release a Beast Wars Silver Bolt. I thought they didn't do a pipeline thing. Yeah, honestly. I know. Like, what we did pipeline what? Like, two, two, three times, maybe? And then they just mm -hmm. stopped? Like, we should be doing pipelines like G.I. Joe does pipelines. <sighs> uh, Master Ben says, I want Legacy Wave 2, but I'm still owie from HasLab. I'm there, too. I'm... Mm -hmm. um, March has been rough. And, uh, it's, it's just crazy. You know, I, here's what I got though. Star Wars. Oh God. I just, I, I realized I backtracked two horrible stories. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> let's switch subjects. Cause I don't think we have anything else to say about Transformers. Star Wars, the Acolyte, a series taking place a hundred years before the Phantom Menace in the time of the High Republic. They finally released the first trailer. I had seen a leaked version of this trailer like four times already. So it was nice to finally see it in HD. Um, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, there was a couple posters in addition to the trailer that came out. This first one is like, look, a beach. And I'm like, thank goodness it's not sand. Because I was talking about how sand makes me excited about stuff, but Star Wars has done too much sand. Uh, this is coming out it's June rough. 4th. It's rough. It's coarse. It's coarse and gets everywhere. <laughs> exactly. I also love this tagline because it sounds like a Garo tagline. In an age of light, a darkness rises. And it's like, whoa, out of lightsaber. Whoa, 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 whoa. So it's talking about, so the, the plot of the show basically is like, uh, there's Jedi that are being killed and they're investigating their murders and there's like an inner darkness coming up and it's probably the Sith, you know, um, you're rising in shadows and stuff. And there's a bunch of really cool people in it, like Carrie Ann Moss is in it. And, uh, that made me really excited cause, uh, it's freaking Trinity. Um, <laughs> but there's like other there's other like other actors that have been in stuff uh they cast daphne keen because the showrunner just wanted to give x23 a lightsaber <laughs> i mean that's that's based um the other thing too the writer's room is interesting because there's there's a there's a writer on the show 
and she's never seen Star Wars before, and right. wasn't and like understood the importance of Star Wars, but was never like a fan of it, right? Mm-hmm. And there's other fans in the writers, or there's other people, there's other writers in the writers' room who are mega fans that love Star Wars and absolutely love it. And so the thing was is that the writer who didn't know anything about Star Wars, she had, uh, she asked the showrunner. Hey, why'd you hire me? Because I find I feel like I'm a little bit out of place here. And she said, I hired you because you don't come at this from a fan perspective, which means you can tell us if something doesn't work out for the narrative, for the actual story. You are gonna like help us keep on track because you know, as fans, we all know the things. But if you're a non-fan, you're gonna be stepping in for all the audience that would be watching this, not knowing all the deep lore stuff and making sure that this works as a story. And that is how you do writing on Star Wars. Well, that's the thing we always keep saying. Um, people take Star Wars too seriously. So people take Star Wars too seriously, exactly. You need some people in, this, in these productions that don't know Star Wars and just know how to make good shows. Because I think what works for Andor, Andor is like the far end spectrum of like, it's made by people who understand the importance of Star Wars, but they're just going to make a sci-fi show in the Star Wars world. Like, they love and respect it, but they're not big fans. And then you have, like, the Dave Filoni stuff where he is, like, George Lucas's, like, student, right? And just does everything Star Wars. And then Acolyte, I think, falls somewhere in the middle where you have people who aren't, like, you have people who fans, people who are not fans, people between in the writer's room to craft a show that I think can kind of balance both. And I think that sounds awesome, and that sounds exactly like what Star Wars needs. So, yeah, Smith the Crow, the people that wrote Beast Wars never worked on Transformers prior. Exactly. It's good to get new, fresh uh, talent in the room, but I also do think it's important to keep some people who are fans and do know the materials, so that way it stays consistent with what you're making. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm excited for this. I'm looking forward to it. No, me too, from what I've mm. heard about it. It's yeah. So weird it visually looks great, like... too. They shot a lot on location. I don't get it. Like, they thought that much about the writing, even. Like, it's so weird that mm-hmm. see, this one got the most, like, dislike. I don't get it. <laughs> uh, let's look at the toys, and maybe we can figure out why, why weird internet trolls would dislike the video so much. Um, all right, so the next day, Hasbro had a Star Wars Imperial March fan stream. I didn't watch it live because the last few Star Wars fan streams have been actually less informative than the Transformers ones. Because the Transformers guys at least talk about the design process. The Star Wars guys read a script and don't tell you anything. <laughs> so, um, I didn't watch it live, but look at this. They have five people, and two of them are from marketing. Um, anyways, look at these lovely people. Uh, I wonder what happened to the guy that used to do the Indiana Jones streams that also worked on Star Wars that like talked with his hands and always was shouting towards the camera. I liked him. He had energy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope he still has his job. Uh, they showed off that three pack uh, that we talked about. There's a uh, four pack of vintage collection figures where you get one unique character and three unique troopers. Um, then there is a new vintage collection stormtrooper, which is pretty neat. Uh, there is a new vintage collection, Darth Vader, uh, also cool. They, uh, showed off some cool photography with them. They finally did a new, a new Hope Leia in vintage collection, which, uh, from what I understand, there's never been a new Hope Leia in vintage collection in the iconic white dress, which seems insane, considering she's released 316. <laughs> Guys, I tell you, Star Wars is cooked sometimes. This is one of the examples. How did it take this long? Also, why is she all plastic? Because that looks like traffic cone. Anyways. She looks good, though. Uh, this, is, this is good for vintage collection people, for sure. Uh, she looks great. Uh, obviously, the uh, person screen capping this for Toy Arc uh, definitely loved the layout. There's also a new R2-D2. Uh, this one's going to be a cleaner design version uh, than what we've gotten before, so it goes with the New Hope stuff. Uh, these are mainline items in the U.S. Canada, Fan Channel Amazon in Europe, and Fan Channel in Asia and the Pacific. Um, so, pretty cool. And... Um, excuse me. I mean, I don't mean to hiccup because I talk too much. They did this great, I love this great chart. And only, only Star Wars brings out this chart, it feels, at times. What is fan channel? <laughs> I feel like every Hasbro stream should do this. Anytime they announce a fan channel, I'm just put this graphic up. They're like, here, this is what fan channel is. Um, so, there you go. All right. Then they announced a Holocom series Darth Maul. Literally don't care. It's just a translucent Darth Maul on a light-up base. Um, he has never had a bounty on him like that, so why would he have a bounty puck? I don't know. We've talked about these before. All right, then we get into the stuff for the Acolytes. So here we have 
uh, Jedi Master What's His Name, who is played by the guy from Squid Game, uh, who I also can't remember <laughs> the name of. <laughs> uh, oh, what's his name this blessed day? Yes. <laughs> but look at the articulation range here. It's sure it's all single jointed stuff, and I don't think they have thighs, but they actually look like I got some room. Um, oh, Infinity War Torn. Uh, catching up with the stream, Patrick, the marketer that talked with his hands a lot, got moved to the Nerf team. Ah, oh, that makes me sad. I'm never going to see him in a thing again because I don't care about Nerf. I also did. They'll do Nerf uh, fan for like fan streams at all. So yeah. <laughs> yeah nope. uh, Astronaut mentions could also be a holocom. It is called the holocom collection, but they are designed like bounty pucks, and I just wish they actually were designed by holo like holocoms. And not both. Um, anyways, I think the articulation range looks pretty good on him. And I like that he has a cloth robe, uh, even though it looks kind of like crap. But, you know, what you expect, it's Hasbro. <laughs> but he looks pretty good. Uh, you can see this is the new boxes. He is Jedi Master Soul. Um, so that's pretty cool. Not Soul Bad Guy, because he's supposed to be the guy investigating. <laughs> I, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Jedi Master Soul Bad Guy. Uh, here is X-23 with a lightsaber. Um, I like these... Okay, that's a pretty good product shot. Looks like she just took the robe off and is throwing it. I like it. Yeah, these are very thin cloth robes. I've had a couple on figures before. Um, but she looks pretty good, too. It's nice to see that they revealed a trailer and then they could show the toys and not have to wait till the show aired to show the toys. I guess they, I guess they learned the bubble fit. <laughs> the book of bubble fit. They actually did go. learn. Uh, here we got another Jedi. Um, I don't... What was her name, actually? Because I... I should start remembering. That's Pat. Okay, so X twenty three is Padawan Jackie Lon. Star Wars guys, Star Wars just they're they're beating Gundam in the name game lately. Um, I mean, I mean, it's all just gibberish in the end of the day. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this guy I remember he was an Arrow, uh, Charlie Barnett, um, and I like saw him and I was like, why does he look familiar? And then he was like, oh yeah, he was an Arrow. He actually has a yellow lightsaber. Which oh, uh, was from Doctor Who. Was he in Doctor Who? What was the gag? Like, almost every Doctor Who oh. actor... Oh, oh, oh every verse. Doctor Who actor ended up in the Arrowverse or some DC-adjacent project. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm in, I'm in the middle of Season 7 now, and uh, and uh, uh, Clara showed up, and I'm like, oh, hey, Joanna Constantine. <laughs> it's just... That's how it goes. Um, anyways, this is Jedi Knight, uh, Yord Fander. Yeah. Um... These are going to be some great base bodies for Jedi. And then we got Jedi Master Carrie Ann Moss. Um, also Jedi Master Trinity, if you wish. Uh, she looks great. I actually pre-ordered her. Uh, not because, you know, she's Jedi Matter, what, whatsoever her name is. I just, I wanted a Carrie Ann Moss figure that had moving knees. You would be surprised <laughs> how that isn't a thing for the Matrix. That's but great. all of them came out during that early 2000s. Oh, it's a collector's action figure. So it's sculpted over, over joints. And they're basically statues. And look at that. They had her do the Trinity uh, crane crane uh, kick pose. <laughs> Rad. Love it. That's the kind of stuff I live for. Um, I pre-ordered her because I was like, I just want my Carrie Ann Moss. Yeah, I remember those old days. So, exactly. <laughs> just, or, yeah, we're part and figure. We're, we're, they were just like, yeah, yeah. part and figure were just statues, pretty much. <laughs> I have the yeah. statue set. It's like Neo and Trinity from the first Hardcore Matrix movie. Don't want, yeah, don't want they're just figures, but, they're static, like, right? They, yeah, collectors don't want joints. God, like the, the Simpsons ones I was telling you about before we streamed. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um. Anyways, I ordered uh, Jedi Master and Dara because I was like, yeah, it's Carrie and Moss. And then we have this lady who is one of the villains. She fights Carrie and Moss with knives in the trailer. Um, she looks pretty cool, too. Uh, I like that she has tiny knives. Uh, makes me wonder why Lokis don't get tiny knives. Um, anyway, she looks pretty cool. Uh, what's her name? That is May, and in parentheses, Assassin. So we're probably going to get another version of her at some uh, point. She got summoned as an assassin. Yeah. Uh, they're doing the connecting spine box thing a little thank, bit. Thank but you. Hey, at least this one you can cut the the side out and just glue them all together. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to them being weird angles like the old ones. Um, so then they talk about boxes. These are all mainline. They're also putting out May in Vintage Collection, uh, which is good because Vintage Collection has a oh, lot of gaps. Oh, wait a minute. Go, go back. Go back. How far back? To the Spine Arts? Yes. Cause... Hold on, where is that? Yeah, Spine Arts. Yeah, no. I, I like them, and, and boy, I, I noticed one of them has the uh, Killmonger haircut that yes, he does. sparked a whole controversy <laughs> with people, because you're like, people are like, I never see that in real life. It's true, the, Killmo so the Killmonger cut just keeps showing up in media, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I, I what was it? But, Somebody, there was a video game that came out recently that actually had like multiple black hairstyles for men. And people were like, you don't just only have Killmonger as an option. I think, I think it was wow, part was that Prince of Persia? I'm not sure about it. I think Prince of Persia, yeah, actually had options besides, like, the Killmonger cut was, like, the default, I think. Yeah. But then, like, he had options. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I the... do like that they actually have spine Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I do, too. Is it me, is it me or one box was taller than others? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eddie Gordo is going to have that cut to attack him when he comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so then with May, she's getting a Vintage Collection. Uh, there's been a problem with Vintage Collection lately, where, like, Vintage Collection tends to do the old stuff, and then Black Series does the new stuff, and not vice versa as often. Like, for example, Bad Batch is about to end, and Vintage Collection has only gotten Hunter. And Black Series got everybody twice. So. You, you think the whole point of Bad Batch having a group, you think they'll yeah. have the group in jail? You think it would have just been a box set? Uh, welcome, Common Jojo. It's, it's like having one turtle and not the other other mm-hmm. three. <laughs> so I'm glad to see that they've already put her in Vintage Collection, and also uh, uh, the Jedi Master Soul as well is in Vintage Collection. So hopefully the other three will make it over as well, because I know a lot of the Andor figures are Black Series only still. So I hope that they, um, I hope that they they continue to do this because that'd be good. They also showed the Moff Gideon helmet, but oh my god, I don't care. Just give me an actual Moff Gideon figure in this armor. Like, don't make the helmet first, you freaking crazy-ass company. Uh, I don't know whose fault that is, if it's Disney or whatnot, but... Yeah, then they showed this Job of the Hut set, which I think is coming out soon. It was one of their, like, pre-order-only items. Uh, and they were like, look, vintage-carded stuff, and I'm like, cool. Uh, let's see, is there anything else in the streams? I don't remember. Oh yeah, Pipeline Reveals. Um, so the Black Series pipeline reveals include the Imperial Armored Commando that Figuarts keeps showing but never doing anything with, the <laughs> Ahsoka Tano the White from the uh, Ahsoka series, uh, that crazy bitch from uh, Andor, uh, Deidre uh, Miro. <laughs> I'm so excited. I, I've been waiting for her. I was like, where is she? We need, we need, um, we need, we need bitch boy as well. I've said that word too many times on the stream already. I don't care. It's just how I refer to people. <laughs> and or. The, the, the money. Oh no! And looked looked at the money jar. Oh no, it's gone. <laughs> um, I love Andor. I just can't remember character names. <laughs> and if I don't know the actor, I've just assigned them titles. Um, now we get to some stupid stuff, and this is I. I'm there. Getting... We go. <laughs> oh, there was a, there's the Hasbro Star Wars. There's the Hasbro Star Wars. Mace Windu in Clone Wars armor comes with his purple, uh, whatever the battalion is, the purple stripes, right? It's a two-pack where you have a named character and a troop builder. Then we had the C-3PO and Super Battle Droid set, which is a named character and a troop builder. Now we have Captain Enoch and a Night Trooper, which is a named character and a troop builder, and it's Walmart. (laughs) And then we have Yoda and Clone Commander Gree, which actually makes some sense. They're comic based, which also means it should be our first prequel Yoda. But I kind of expect them to half ass it with the original trilogy Yoda. It's just going to happen, and they're I miss, just going to be repaint. I, but that's going to be I a miss, Disney store does, and Pulse exclusive. Does he come with the hover chair? They said he does. Good. I miss it. I want to see how that turns thing. out, though. That's what, that was my favorite thing about Lego Star Wars One is the hover chair for Yoda. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Anyways, so that's that's that. And then for Vintage Collection, there's Jetpack Trooper, Grand Admiral Thrawn from Ahsoka, a four-pack of X-Wing pilots. Uh, Jamie's World, how come Bandit has the to figure figure arts of Star Wars, uh, but not other properties? Um, it's um, Because I don't think Hasbro Star Wars really is that... I don't think there's a market for Hasbro Star Wars in Japan. No, there isn't. Saw- Star Wars and Moff X are the only, are like the whole market over there. Yes, I think that's oh, why wow. Ban- I think that's why Bandit can have Star Wars license, but that's yep. why we don't get them here in America, because Hasbro owns the master license. Mm. Uh, we're getting a Blurg and Mandalorian two pack because you needed more Mandalorians and a Moff Gideon's Imperial Light Cruiser hallway playset because we need more Mandos apparently. Good God, that mold is going to die soon. Uh- <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised it's in pieces. <laughs> hey guys, you remember the Haslab Ghost that ended recently? Yes. You know how it doesn't ship for another like eight months? Guess That's what? Right. There's another vintage collection Haslab starting May 4th. Get excited! Did just pay for one? We just paid for the Transformers one last, like, what, yeah. oh, two weeks ago? It's been two yeah. And, yeah. and that was and that was a spicy meatball in terms of the yep. cost. And this was a $500 HasLab that was last fall. 
and yet they're like, so they, "You're not even gonna get this first. You're gonna we're gonna put you out for another one." And I'm just like, "Jeez." So at least, at least, yeah, at least Omega Prime came out after everybody got their Death Star. Yeah, exactly. But Star Wars <laughs> is like May Fourth. There'll be a new Haslap. Also, there's some product any, shots of these figures. I mean, any theories of what it could be? I don't know. I feel like they're out of ideas. They've done a sail barge. They've done a ghost. They've done Mando's cruiser. Like Millennium Falcon, new brand new Millennium Falcon. Question I think people mark? would lose their mind because they just re-released that Millennium Falcon at Galaxy's Edge like a couple years ago. Um, actual Death Star place said like <laughs> Master Ben says, "Can we get a new Black Series Hazlab? If it's a black, it's not going to be a Black Series." But after the Rancor and the lightsaber failed so spectacularly, they're never going to do a Black Series Hazlab again. It's done. The idea is, it, it's too much of a risk now because they did two things and it, and then in corporate terms, we tried it twice, it didn't work. They'll do Cookie Monster again before they do an Iron Black Series yep. Star Wars. <laughs> uh, Spin Dash, I didn't mention the figure arts episode one thing happening next month because it didn't have any details. Same as I didn't mention the teaser that looks like Sage Mode Naruto and Yusuke from Yu Yu Hakusho. We'll talk about them when they get revealed. Uh, well, there was an actual photo. Wasn't there an actual photo of Sage Mode Naruto? Yeah, but it's a leak and I ain't touching that thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I ain't touching magazine Makes leaks. Total. I'll what do is, Transformers leaks. What is your favorite Naruto form? Do My favorite Naruto form? Do you prefer Karama mode or Sage mode? I like Karama Link mode a lot. That's why I bought that figure. I like the one that was only there at the end and then Karama died. But Barian mode? Yeah. Oh, that one. Yeah. Was, what was that one again? <laughs> Barian? B- I don't know what it's pronounced. B A R Y O N. Is that the one with the bone armor? No, I'm thinking oh. Shippuden. I'm yeah. thinking the one early Shippuden. No, it's 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 from Naruto GT, so you don't know. It's... Oh, Boruto, okay. <laughs> uh, Master Ben said Hazlab Pod would... Racer. That's actually a good thing, because May in May they're doing that like screening of the Phantom Menace. Maybe it is a Phantom Menace-related Hazlab. If it is... <laughs> Maybe it's a prequel one. If it's a uh, Pod Racer, you know what the tier, when the tier skull should be? What? It should be like a surround system, so you can recreate the the, the, the oh, sound, like the boom sound effects. That'd be great. I would love that. That'd be fun. It's probably just going to be like, here's some rocks. Uh, <laughs> Jamie's wrote, I don't cover magazine leaks because I don't want the publishers of those magazines coming after me. <laughs> yeah, the man. The it's man, happened right? before. So, Oh, and guess what? Even though that was the end of the stream, there was more reveals the next day because I, I don't get... This is a Disney thing. They're like, Imperial March... And then, like, the fan stream was the day before the reveal, so then they're like, here's more reveals, and I'm like, why did you just show these at your stream? Anyways, uh, this is the, what is this called? The Masters of Evil 3-pack, which after Marvel fans have been asking for a Masters of Evil pack, this is just a slap in the face. <laughs> Jerry, I hear that, and Jerry, you know what I'm talking about. Gentlemen, too evil! Oh, God. <laughs> yep. yep. Weevil. <laughs> yep. So we have Ahsoka Thrawn uh, with his little like crushed. dragon pet thing. We have Vader, uh, who's an older mold, and we have Grievous in the Clone Wars design. And oh, so, so is it the Clone Wars there? It is because it's the white color with the with the thin cape, not the um it so Master Ben says it's two old toys and one new. Yeah, but the Thrawn's coming out in a single pack like a couple months later. Also, this doesn't come out till January of 2025. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, he's definitely off compared to his animation model because all he did was take the movie one and just paint it 2D Clone Wars colors. That's because he, he, if they made a full toy line in Gendy style, I would buy it. <laughs> no, we just get some random Walmart exclusives yeah. that just reuse molds. Um, this pack is weird and I don't understand why. <laughs> Look, I don't get it. It's just, just let's again, just slap again, three bad again, guys again, together, like again. It's gentlemen to evil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also, know, like, man, that Thrawn figure looks awful. Like they really? they said, oh, we updated the body, and I'm like, you didn't need to. I mean, the old I don't one was better. Three packs like I don't mean like three packs like this because like hey, look, if I'm not gonna give uh, Jack perfect exclusive, yeah, they're like on retro cards and everything, like perfect exclusive because I don't give a crap. But yeah, because like you know, like I'm not, I'm not, I didn't give Jax any. Like hate for the having classic tales being at like um yeah because we know they're going to release them later yes and this is a similar thing so like look I'm if I'm the, if the not, question if I'm the only being... question I have about this is who is this for I guess for like <laughs> uh, casual people who it's like oh, I like Star Wars but wouldn't I casual like people want them. like movie Grievous I guess yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean like it and it's also like these guys never interacted with each other 
They've never been they in the same a... scene together. Now I'm just imagining like an eighties cartoon. These three are like the three like like Saturday morning cartoon villains. Like we will plot for evil. Might as we'll well take be. over the world. <laughs> where's the where's the web series in the Galaxy Adventures art style where they're the main villains? What's uh, that? Uh, can- what's that? Cancel the Star Wars cartoon. Star Star Wars detours. <laughs> yeah. Smith the Crow says, "Why don't they? Why do? They, why don't they do the animate figures in their actual styles? Because they hate fun." And they want everything in the same art style because, I mean, it, it looks nice when it's all in the same art style. I don't mind that problem. They don't also do animated style figures because they spent the molds on the realistic style ones. Can't re- you can't reuse the molds. <laughs> yep. Also, I think, like, Lucasfilm low-key hates animation, so they were like, don't do any animated yeah. stuff. Yep. <laughs> um, Back in the day, that was all Twist, Twist does brings up a good point. Wouldn't this made more sense to be Tarkin instead of Grievous? Yes. That would have made this a solid pack <laughs> if it was like Tarkin, Vader, and Thrawn. It's like, oh, Empire guys from that, you know, Empire I can't era. Even, I can't like, even I think say Grievous was, is the one that stands out to me. As like, why is I can't he even here? Say, I can't even say, oh, it's villains from each era. No, because nope. Thrawn is a, it's a, it's a original trilogy character. Even, even though he, soul. like, right now he's like the villain from... You know, like for the the Ahsoka era stuff, right? But like, it's still like that's the original trilogy era, not sequel era. Yeah, like it's it's still OT era. It's not like they put Kylo in here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very strange. Uh, they have done Tarkin a couple times. They put him as a single pack. They put him in the archive line. Why not a third Tarkin? I don't know. All right. Uh, there also is a Holocom Vader. Okay, moving on. They're also re-releasing Balin's skull as a Walmart exclusive, this time called Mercenary. Hopefully, he has the correct lightsaber color now. Hopefully he has the correct height, because that was a problem with the original figures. He was too short, and Shin Hadi was too tall. And I think they're just going to re-release them this way, give them the soft, good robes, and then just readjust the height. Um, Where is he from? Uh, Soka series. He's like one of the uh, main I, villains. I need, wa- I need to watch it. He's the yeah. guy that died. As in, Ray Stevenson passed away, and that was sad. Because I don't know how they're going to continue the storyline without him. Um, hopefully not deep faking it. Hopefully not deep faking it. Uh, so that's that. Uh, let's see. How often do they do comic exclusive characters? Uh, Spin Dash asked. Uh, random at times you wouldn't expect they just suddenly appear, <laughs> just out mm-hmm. of nowhere. Here's a comic figure. Uh, like this Yoda two pack. It's like, well, why are you doing it now? Because we felt like it. <laughs> it's just. It's, they're always exclusives, though. You never get a, re- a retail uh, comic figure. Um, Smith Cross says, give us Black Series Lando and his Captain Harlock get up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Master Ben said, why not do a Palpatine's Apprentice pack? It's been a while since we got Dooku. Yeah, we were supposed to get a Dooku re-release, but it's been swapped out for a prequel Palpatine instead, according to Yak Face, so. What? Okay. So, I don't know anymore, guys. Star Wars is a bit of a mess, but I'm still gonna, I keep covering it. I, I keep complaining about it, and I don't buy it's that like many figures, ship. but it's just it, it, fun it's to like, cover. It's like it's like a, it's like a ship about to hit the iceberg. You just yeah. don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't I don't know what to say to a lot of things with Star Wars, but I still want to keep talking about it because I think it's interesting. Speaking of interesting, hey. Jax is doing more Sega toys. So, oh, this is really cool. So, this is what I'm hyped for. Starting so, with so the is... altered beast werewolf. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. This is... So this is similar um, because you know this little backstory time. Um, Jax, if you're for pe- young people, Jax used to do the World Nintendo line from like 20, 2014 to like twenty seventeen, where it was like Mario, Mario, and every other uh, Mario, the Mario toy plus other that. characters. Yep. Uh, and then it just became the Mario toy. Last year, when it became the Mario toy line, I just stopped caring. <laughs> yeah. Last year, but look at that. Last year, um. They decided to release a new, newly sculpt uh, Breath of the Wild Link, Breath of the Wild Zelda, and Metroid Prime Samus. It was good to Walmart, and they're and they're like really good figures. And then they waved. Then later that year, they released a new Donkey Kong, uh, four inch Donkey Kong scale, and Diddy Kong release. And I think and to this year, credit they... of Jackson Walmart, I saw all five of those in my store, and my store and did nothing. I, so and I think this year, uh, they just released a um. A phase on suit Samus, the black and silver one, and a Breath of Wild Link with the Master Sword and a Highling Shield. Mm-hmm. So this is, they're doing the same weird thing here, where they're, Jax is uh, going outside of Sega, uh, uh, outside of Sonic, uh, and doing other Sega properties like Ultra Beast, uh, Streets of Rage, and Monkey Ball. Yep. So, so this is the, the were- werewolf looks great. 
I think he looks terrific. Can, can I say, you, can can I, cost a little yeah. power ball to can, power can I say, because uh, these are probably going to be $10 figures. Look at the crazy articulation they have. For oh, I know. They have like double act. joints, right? They have more articulation. Double joint, they, double joint everything, bicep swivels and, and hip butterfly swivels, joints. Like knee, and thigh swivels, butterfly joints. These have more articulation than Black Series. Yeah, and these, are ten dollars, and these are $10. The only yeah. other toy line I... Ten dollars. So that 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 Dragon Ball ten dollar one. Yeah, like, the Dragon Ball Evolve Evol- figures. Evol- yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's actually. But, but it's, look at Altered Beast. And he's like Fox Fox and, and here's yeah, Streets of Rage guy Axel. <laughs> uh, Bla- yeah, Axel. Yep. Because of a flame effect and everything, and this is not surprising because Sega's such a <laughs> after the game. You know, Sega's doing that whole new Sega age. Look at Sega. The old box art. That's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, matching system style and everything. You know, I'm not surprised Sega's been doing this because you know they're pushing their other IPs like. Yeah, you know, like using that Sonic Wars. money and making more stuff. With the with yep. the uh, werewolf though, I hope they make the golden one from the end of the game because uh, it, I mean that's I'm sure easy. they will because they love the repaints. Exactly, repaint. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I and see this. I see that the box art there. I, 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 he has a flame effect, so I guess it's Streets of Rage two. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's not Streets of Rage four. It's yeah, it's classic. It's Axel's classic design. Uh, uh, I I from one, Super Monkey one, Ball one though is like perfect. Different. Yeah, no, it's really yeah, cool. He's yeah, he's not he's just a posable. He's actually a posable figure, but he comes with the ball and everything. Yeah. And what's and what's cool is I think the little standing stance on has a little like bar, metal bar bearing, so it can actually like grab like oh, it weights it weights him down. Somebody like the game. in chat was asking how good are Jack specific like they're great. Quality. They're, they're yeah, great. Yeah. They're, no, honestly, I think Jax is on the best toy makers right now in mm. terms of like the ten dollar figures because they're they're quality figures and like especially seeing like how creative they did with. I hear where they, you know, they're, because in the game, the, you know, the monkey just say sail, but the ball rotates, and having that oh. stand with the metal ball, it's gonna do the like, same thing. Weighting it down, it's gonna be the yeah. same thing. That's what, so what cool. What, what, how big are they? So four, four inches. Four inches. Four inches. Yeah. Four inches. yeah. And, uh, they look great. Um, uh, and um, Techie was asking, maybe we'll get Rio. I hope. Uh, Mate- <laughs> uh I won the uh, the the main mark. I'm playing, I'm playing as main, but the mech, the main marketing uh merchandise head of Sega. Who works with Jax with the Sonic and now these? Mm. How they confirm if these sell well, they're gonna do more. I'm gonna so buy that's... all three of these because I need an Amigo figure. Yeah, I know. With his maracas, like <laughs> yeah, like if these do uh, well, yeah, I can. Mm-hmm. So that's I mean it's Atlas, but the Sega. Well, that's well. Smart. Here's here's the thing. I'm cu- I was thinking about this when they announced uh, Axel Bla- uh, Axel from Street. Is what can they cover? Because I know for Nintendo, they cannot do any second party uh, IPs like. Fire Emblem or Kirby because those are not developed in house by Nintendo. Cool, yeah. yeah, yeah, those are intelligent systems in how, and I and these are all Sega properties. So I'm curious, like, I don't, I don't think any Atlas properties is uh probably allowed because that's their own IP and mm-hmm. such. Kyle, you probably know a little bit more. Is Yakuza is that because I know that's RG, you know, RGG Studios. RGG but... is Sega. Yeah, so I think yeah. they could touch Yakuza. I they think. can. Yeah, they should. Yeah, the only question should. is, can they release Yakuza at a toy line oh. that has a three plus on the box? <laughs> that, <laughs> they don't that need another problem. Like, yeah, I so guess basically, it's... Yakuza has a better shot than Persona. Persona, Persona. Or, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw Ooh, somebody. Oh, somebody man, said uh, Jet Set Radio. Tanuk, Mister Tanuk no, said Jet Set yeah. Radio. That'd be cool. No, definitely. That's if, if there's That's a way to do. Definitely possible. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I want gum. I just really want Amigo, guys. I, I yeah. want a Samba de Amigo figure. It's it's time. <laughs> ooh, ooh, Lala from Space Channel 5. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's great. It's just great to see. Mr. Diggs uh, says, top of my head, Knights, Jet Set Radio, and Golden Axe should all be accessible. Yep, sounds good yes. to me. Yeah. This is great. It's you know, great you to get see. the Barbarian dude from Golden Axe, you'll have yep. that figure mm-hmm. right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's just great to see uh, Jack's uh, duties. Uh, Sega and Jack's oh, duties. To do, um, so a lot of these characters never got action figures. Like, the only, uh, I, I, I think only I got action figure back in like the GameCube era stuff yeah. from Droid Studios, and that's it. I don't think Street Race Eric got any action figures and such an Ultra Beast, so this mm. is really cool. Oh, Sega, Sega, yeah, where is our Sega Tell Sanchero action figure? Legally, they could. <laughs> Legally, they could. Smith the Crow wants Puyo Puyo. Oh, no, that's definitely another one they could easily do. Mm. Um, because that's actually that is definitely Sega. This is like exciting, and I hope I can get all three of them and review them because I will. <laughs> it was, honestly, again, like seeing yeah. the 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 Nintendo the other the Walmart because Nintendo stuff for easy available. Mm-hmm. I think these will honestly will be easy available. Yeah, as so. long as they're as available as the Samus and the Link and all that, because I see them 
consistently. So, mm -hmm. all right. Everyone was asking me about it in the Discord. Moffex Spider Man 2099. What do I think? What do I think of this, this beautiful, freaking gorgeous ass figure? It's going to cost me so much yep. money, but I don't give a crap. Yeah, it looks yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I've talked about Spider Man 2099 and his design elements a lot in a whole video about how nobody really nailed it. Holy crap, someone finally nailed it. Uh, <laughs> no, this is I, I, it's great because what I like about it. He's like almost that, perfect. <laughs> what I like about it, it's not like black, black. No, because it, it's. Yeah, it's not nice straight black, but it's not blue. Oh my god, it's is a, it not blue? It's a dark, very dark blue. So you, it, it is a black a... that has been blueified with a couple tints. And I know that sounds weird, but I took color theory. That's how you do it. You no, just... I, I know exactly what you mean. It, it, it pulls yeah. the black towards the blue without going all the way into the blue. It's a, ha it's a happy medium, it's which I like. I know some people medium. just prefer the blue on 29. People prefer the blue, but they have no idea what he should be, which is black. And yeah, so black I with a little blue a... in it. Ugh, it's perfect. I love it. And yeah, this is yeah. And also, I, 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 I like yeah. I like the body proportions because uh, yeah, I like it too. I, like... I do wish his shoulders were a little bit wider, but they gave him like articulation, so I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, because you know Miguel, look, cause I never liked, I never liked the Marvel Legends piece of no, piece of body that, that did not fit. I mean, I, I'm always nice Miguel. to it, but it sucks. It does not fit Miguel because Miguel is Muteki. I already ordered this. Don't worry, I'm not missing out. On it. <laughs> Miguel, yeah, Miguel yeah. is supposed to be a more beefier guy than Peter. So mm. I'm glad that they didn't give him more of a beefier sculpt. Small uh, Small here. Dream said it's not it's it's only it's only not fully black for the sake of comic shading. Yeah, what it is is that like it's supposed to be black, so they start with that color, but then because the shading made him look blue, they kind of they toned it up to get like, you know, the look of it. So you're looking at it and I'm like oh, Yeah. That's great. Um also adding to this, I love the way they did the cape. So the web cape, which is a glide cape. Uh, it's, it's this, you know, little cape thing, which is great, but you get to add on two extra little things to his arms. So for the white, cause it's supposed to, cause like when he first has it, cause it's just something he, he stole from a Thorite, uh, basically when he, as he was falling. So it kind of just like, it's, it's like tattered, but it goes across his shoulders onto like his biceps. Like, like it looks like here. Um, it's not yeah, because it's not a yeah. cape cape. It's not like how Spider Verse uh, made it look like a cape mm. cape. No, it's not a cape. It's this is like a rag, really. It, it's supposed yeah. to be like a glide material that allows you to like. It's like a parachute like material, but it's been torn mm -hmm. up a bit, so that's why it looks like that. Um, it, it, a lot of his stuff in the show is very, or in the comic is very haphazard. Oh, Spindo said random. I had to refresh. Got a gunpla ad before the stream. Algorithm actually intelligent today. Yeah, that's what I like to see. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's relevant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Adding to this, he does have web effects. Uh, see you later, Jamie's World. Web effects that go over the wrists. Thank you very much. That's accurate. Plus, he can hold a web, which is something you think more Spider-Man figures would do. How can shot web? Yeah. This, go, web, go. This freaking pose right here is, is everything to me. <laughs> I love it. That's cool. Also, of note, I talked about the talons in the video, uh, in the review of the other figures. He does not have, like claws he doesn't have claws like saber tooth he has talons that stick out of his hand and you notice on the hands they actually molded the talons correctly that they're like talons shooting down from his fingers i wonder i i not i won't be surprised if the reason why like hasbro hasn't done it because that be that might be a safety it might be a safety thing because it's a small molded piece yeah so i think you know so it's, you know makes sense. i'd rather they just claw, give him like... normal fingers at that point i don't like the the claws like the carnage claws that they gave him on the legends one yeah mm-hmm but look, I mean, this is just... God, I was hoping this would be everything I wanted, and I'm not let All down. Because right, so people always ask the... me, people always ask me, why did you not buy the Mezco? And I'm like, because the Mezco is bright-ass blue. <laughs> now yeah. about the face. Uh, the face. Let's is, talk uh... about the face, because I got asked about this in the Discord. Um, so course, he... I, love the squint... I love the squinty face. That's I love how he has the, op the, op the normal eyes and the squinty eyes, like the judgmental eyes, and he's got a you know, mask up. That's probably right. the squinty one's probably. If I would have this one, that would be my default head because that's Miguel so should be always. Miguel's I, like always pissed off in, in my eyes. <laughs> he is for many reasons. All right, so let's talk skin tone. So as we talked about with the Spider Verse version, he has a darker skin tone in that movie, right? They made him more Miguel than O'Hara with the with the skin tone, but in the comics, he's more O'Hara than Miguel with the skin tone. So he has a lighter yeah, skin I, tone, I, and this looks good yeah. to me. I think yeah, I think yeah, it's I, a it's a little light you know, in some angles, but like, I think it's going to be good on the final, like when it's like 
in plastic. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. People when I remember when the figure when the photos came out, a lot yeah. of people thought they whitewash it. No, 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 no. He's, he's actually he, he oh, actually he, looks he like that. Big. Yeah. Yeah, the, you know, Spider the Spider Verse made him more Hispanic, but yeah, the original mm. comic is definitely more. He's not. He's more white. He looks than... like me in the comic. He doesn't get out. He doesn't get sun. There's no sun in New Wave of York. You know, like yeah, yeah. Also, like, uh, does he have fangs? It looks like he has fangs. It looks like he has um... fangs. The other cool part too is they didn't give us an unmasked head where we have to see his hair, so we don't have to go into that debate. <laughs> yeah, because whether his hair is he... brown, uh, red, or... or black is a complete like. <laughs> it depends on the artist. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, the black hair never looked right to me, unless, unless it's Spider-Verse. Uh, there's all the web effects. You get multiple pieces for the cape, multiple pieces for the webs. You know, that sort of thing. And Jensen Ackles just appeared. I don't care anymore. Moving back. All I right, have so... one thought that was named as Spider-Man 2099. Go for every it. time, it's, boy, <laughs> this is, like, unrelated, but at the same time it is, because, like, mm -hmm. boy, man, seeing 2099 get all this proper love, and then we got Unlimited on TV. I know, right? <laughs> It's uh, see, oh god, Mr. Tuggy said monkey's paw. Miguel gets the Killmonger haircut. Oh god. Oh god. No. <laughs> oh god. It's so nice because uh you know I'm as a you know, as a Miguel fan for so many years, like a lot of figure like, you know, before the current like the Marvel Legends, man, I remember some of those bad mm. early year toy biz or Hasbro. I've owned nearly early. every figure they've made of this guy, and this is finally one that looks right. <laughs> Yeah, because I remember there was the old Spider-Man Classics one, which is bright blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then there was, I think, the ha Spider-Man Origins line, Miguel, which was a glorified statue at that point. Yep. <laughs> um, and such like that. So it's just really nice to see, like, I'm I real, can't wait like, for this finally, to come out sometime. Comic. Yeah, it's it's a it, it's perfect, right? Like, it just looks perfect to me. Mm -hmm. I can't also, wait for this nice to come is... out between February and July of next year. Yeah. What's perfect was nice is since uh, Mayfax are like what six inch scale, he will not look out yeah. of place in your Marvel Legends display. Was I put my Storm on my Marvel Legends display, and I was like, "Ooh, that looks nice." But then I took mm -hmm. her out because she was out outclassing everybody. I was like, "She needs to have her." <laughs> she just looked better. Than everybody Miguel, Miguel, her. Me or Miguel? Yeah, no, he's for the future. He can look like a bit better. Exactly. <laughs> he's allowed exactly. to. Um, also, he's a also he's a loner. He's usually he's a loner. That's true. So yeah, he, yeah, he doesn't mind <laughs> so being it... different. I'm yeah. so excited. I'm I can't wait. Um. Very excited. Uh, let's run down the uh, Blu-ray DVD news, and then we're done. Like, we're really close to the end of this. It's just, this is, like, a lot of just, this is happening news. Because um, I know, Ryan, you want to go soon. And um, I think we can get through the rest of the news. All right, so there was the Blu-ray news. First up, uh, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island and Scooby-Doo Return to Zombie Island are going to be a Warner Archive Hanna-Barbera double feature. Yeah, Mutek, I didn't cover the Gunflaw news. Maybe we'll have to do that next week. It's so um, wild that it took him to now get Zombie Island to Blu-ray. Right? Because it's such a popular movie. Yeah, and uh, it comes with Return to Zombie Island. And for everybody going, oh, watch. why do I have to buy Return? It's going to be the price of one movie. Don't yeah. complain about it. <laughs> don't worry. Stuff. You don't have to watch it. Just, just, yeah, you just, just pay for one movie. <laughs> pay for it. You'll have both of them, you know, for the collection. Um Pretty cool. Honestly, cause, uh, honestly, I can't wait because Zombie Island is a beautiful film. And see that in HD. Mm -hmm. It's going to look great. It's going to be pretty good. So that's coming up soon. Uh, thanks to, to Deals R Us in Canada, the uh, number one stop shop for leaked listings on things. Uh, hey, happy, uh, welcome to Collector 111. Happy Monday to you also. <laughs> Monday as well. Um, see, Spindash said, guarantee is a factor of WE's kids' mainline home video department relinquishing rights to Warner Archive. Definitely. Um, all right. So, Dexter's Laboratory, the complete series, is apparently coming to DVD uh, with a pruder date of May 14th. We'll see if that's accurate, I, but... I know it's been... I, I spin that burden this up in the Discord, but, like, I'm a bit worried because of, A, aspect ratio, because I think he mentioned, like, there's mm. some aspect ratio problems with the series. On streaming. Was on, um, on streaming. And we'll include the movie. Uh, because yeah. Because I know... Because Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and Fosters didn't, right? Did not. Didn't, they, yeah, they didn't. Yeah. No, Fosters did, and then they didn't. Right. Is, uh, bad. I haven't bought the, either the of those sets because I heard they weren't great. Uh, for the price, <laughs> like, if there were 20, fine. Yeah. If the, they're like 40. I saw Ed, Ed, and Eddie for 28, and I was like, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, like, that price is fine, but I, like, the, it's kind of worse since it, it's kind of worse for Ed, Eddie not to come with its mm. movie because that's the series finale. So, like, that's kind of worse. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Emmer's Tal. This is a good comment from earlier. Going back to the Millennium Ring peep and I pre I pre before they took it down. My order's still active. I emailed them to confirm if it's still good, and customer service says it was. All right, so that's good that they're honoring any orders that were made while it was up, because it kind of seemed like it was almost accidentally put up. 
but I'm glad that they're honoring your order. Um, uh, and uh, so. Spinach, uh, reefer. Uh, Foster was fine. Ed Eddie was missing the holiday specials and the final mo finale movie. Okay. So yeah, I want to get those sets eventually, but the price is too high. Yeah. All right, the new Adventures of Batman is coming to Blu-ray because not not to be confused with the new Batman Adventures, right? Which we already have has. on Blu-ray as part of the Batman the Animated Series set. This is the one with Batmite and Batgirl that. Todd McFarlane was like, I'm making Pink Riddler and you can't stop me. I think it, was this yeah. the one with Adam West returning yes. the voice? This was the one with Adam West voicing him. Um, so that's that's good. We're getting a re-release of Beetlejuice to complete series through Warner Brothers. The previous release was done through Shout Factory. Oh geez, I, Bro, I love that show growing up. That's oh, great geez, show. I wonder oh geez, I wonder what thing's coming out through. Uh, is it Beetlejuice really? Beetlejuice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beetlejuice. Um, no, you, no, you fools! You got seven of him. <laughs> the thing is, is uh, I I found out a lot of the people that worked on this show like moved right into X Men the animated series. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's, that's awesome! I didn't know that. Right? <laughs> I was reading when I was reading uh, Eric Lewald's book. He was like talking about like, oh yeah, this person worked on Beetlejuice and this person worked on Beetlejuice, and I was just like, how many people that worked on this moved to X Men? It turned out a lot. Uh, they're also re releasing Steven Universe the complete series on DVD. Um, <sighs> still not a Blu Ray. I that's I don't remember. Crazy. It. I yeah. don't think the Mimi was got Blu-ray, so I'm not surprised. The, the, like, yeah. the individual scene that came out It's just going to be a repack. Era, it? It's a repack. Yeah, yeah no, it's an HD era crazy. show with only a DVD, yeah. Yeah, uh, so I think it's just taking those se seasons, because I think every season came out on the home media. Yeah. So it's just taking those and repackaging it into one set. That's nice. We did that for should Adventure a... Time as well. Yeah. It yeah. should be a Blu-ray, because it's an HD show, but whatever. Speaking of should be a Blu-ray, My Adventures of Superman Season 1 is coming out <laughs> oh. March uh, May 14th. Uh, it's, fresh. <laughs> this even makes less sense to I know. not be a Blu-ray. This frustrates me so much because the show is beautiful. We've no, gotten so many DC shows on, on Blu-ray, but yet here's a DVD only. I'm wondering if, like Harley Quinn, the Blu-ray will be coming out just through Warner Archive. I'll buy both because there's a game. Knowing Warner Brothers, who knows at this point. Yeah. So I'll, I'll still buy it. I, I like, mean, just I remember that just because they released two seasons of Stargirl on Blu ray doesn't mean that they would release the third on Blu ray because they yep. didn't. It's DVD only. What the hell? Yep. Um, so I'll still buy it. Harley and Quinn. Uh, now, with Harley Quinn as well, seasons one and two were packaged together onto a single Warner Archive Blu ray set. So I almost wonder if that might happen here as well. Yeah, I also buy it because I, I love yep. the show and want to support it. I'll do the Sonic Boom <laughs> thing where I buy it on DVD and then if they put out a Blu-ray, I'll buy it on Blu-ray. Yep. I did it with Blu-ray of the Batman no, as dipping. well. What? All right. And the last thing, Thank speaking of do. double dipping, but may not have to, the Super Mario Brothers 30th Anniversary Collector's Edition that Umbrella Entertainment released uh, recently sold out everywhere, high demand, people love it. It is now no longer going to be a limited edition. They're going to reprint it to have everyone have the chance to experience the set. And so it's going to be now the collector's edition. The contents, I believe, are the same. And uh, it'll include all the extra stuff, but no limited edition numbering. So anyone that bought the first set will have one with a number on it. They also, um, they, you know, they, they, they had such outpouring of support and messages that they were like, let's put it out completely. And because they know that some people bought the single release 4K, Oh, missing the film cell and sticker sheet. Thank you, Spindash. I knew there was something different. That's not too bad, because you're still getting the books and everything. The people that did buy the 4K, if you want to upgrade your set, like a one-up, they will be offering the Trust the Fungus edition without the discs in it as well. So uh, The beautiful meme. And also, that's just awesome. That is such a such, cool thing to do. I've never seen a company do something this cool. This is pretty rad. I, so. I, I, it's well deserved because this set mm. is amazing. Like this, like and I'm the glad they looked at it and set. said, "Wow, the demand was way higher than we thought. Let's re-release this so more people can get it." Because a certain Sony releasing a Ghostbusters set that sold out everywhere and people wanted the contents of decided, "Nah, we made enough." Mm -hmm. Like so. that's great. Like I, I, it's great because you, you, know, I, I'm not because they really just show that like as much as you know this mm -hmm. movie is a bad movie, there is a fan cult, like a fan base for this. Yeah stupid movie <laughs> me included um so it was really cool to do that so you never see other like you know disco Day doesn't do stuff like this and yeah you know, they're also a niche company also so disco Deck also doesn't do limited editions which is nice unless they can't help it like with some of the releases yeah but... like some of the stuff getting uh, yeah like uh... i i want to know what's going on with some of the disco Tech out of print stuff because it's very confusing um exactly. thank you to the collector for your comments saying i'm a big fan of your youtube channel you do amazing power content 
other contacts. Uh, I love what you do on YouTube channel. Appreciate you. Thank you, Collector. I appreciate you watching and supporting the channel. Um, so, anyways, uh, Spin Dash says, Santa, did you pick this up? No. And I'm not planning to, even though it looks amazing. Are you getting the 4K at least? I want to, but I don't know if I can yet. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why is because as much as I do appreciate what the movie is, I, I, I mean, it's fine. I like the work print version that, like, came out online, where it was, like, the original really dark version, and I'm like, ah, I really like <laughs> this version. But, uh, it's something that I feel like I would buy, but it's not a high priority, because it's not, like, yeah, it's no, one of my favorites of all time, you know, that kind of thing. But, like, look, um, it's, it, yeah. it's, 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 for me, it's similar, like, Master of the Universe movie. It's not a good Mario movie, but it's a stupid fun right. movie. Right. And, and that's the same thing I am with the, I love that's the Master of the Universe movie for that, too. Like, I just love that movie. Um, and if Master of the Universe had something like this, I, I you know, I would be like all over it um but yeah so i i kind of hope i, I want to get the, at least the 4k but uh we'll see what happens it's it, even the 4k is sold out now so i'm like i just gotta wait and see um there's a lot of stuff coming out like i'm not getting the geats blu-ray right away because disney that's plus 100 that's 100 dollars. <laughs> 80 dollars at the best and also like there's four disney plus steel books coming out the week later so i'm like got to it fanish Irish says i think the work print version is included in this release that would be great because I like the work print version a lot. <laughs> Every time, like, like a Blu-ray, like the a Blu-ray snuck, this the Blu-ray snuck up behind. I just imagine like the Ultra Instinct dun, dun, yes. <laughs> coming, coming behind you. That or the the power like elephant sound. Spin Dash says <laughs> Umbrella's doing Mo too. I need to look into that. <laughs> I I remember hearing about that. And now I, I'm thinking, oh no, I think Wait. I forgot about that. But Tiki, where are you getting those prices for Geats? Because uh, he's like... saying wait for sixty or thirty five or forty. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna wait on Geats just because I think I I just don't want to spend that much money on it to be honest. Like that's what it is at the end of the day. But exactly always sold out. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> I said that to a lot of people before. Yeah. So no. Some things are like I just don't think it's I, I I'm willing to buy this, but not for that much. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, same. Just with, some sometimes you just. I mean, have I, that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just bought I just, I just bought Persona Tree Reload for like forty bucks because I'm nice. on sale. Awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Okay, so I think that's all the news. Um, so uh, I let's see what forgot let me, Kels, to mention the the member thing I'm doing. <laughs> Well, let me let me uh, Kals, yeah. me and Kals chat uh, shout out before, and then you can announce it because we won't. I won't be down there, so we'll. Yeah, so, Kals, do you, uh, did you want to stick around for extra hour, or you just want to like? No, know? I'm here. Yeah, do you all want? Right. Do you want to? Do you want to join us for the member thing? Yeah. All right, cool. We'll do all right, it. Uh, all right, Ryan. Follow me. Ryan's gonna head so, out now, so uh, or you, take you off. Oh boy. Follow, <laughs> yeah, you, you can follow me at Darko Six Three on YouTube, Twitter, or the Art Commission. It's like the one you see this very channel. Uh, and you want any? Feel free to DM me on your Twitter or on Sales Disco Protocol. Uh, anyways, See you later, so uh, anyways, so have a nice night, guys. See you later, Ryan. All right, all right, Kaus, do you want to plug first, and then we'll we'll discuss the member thing that I'm about to do. Yeah, that <laughs> makes sense. Well, yeah, yeah. For uh, I'll still be here, but follow me on Fighter Kaus Twitch TV slash Fighter Kaus. Uh, this week. Because of other things, I, I'm probably gonna not re up PlayStation Plus because I think I don't. I, there's other stuff I need to take care of. Mm -hmm. So unless somebody wants to, you know, give ten bucks, but that's that's not a that's not really important. So this week and maybe next week, I'll be playing Bloody Roar one, two, and three on, yeah. my, on my Twitch. And I was like, "Yo, sound out! You need to come here because if you haven't seen Bloody Roar, you need to. And if you already have, relive it. And it's Bloody Roar. So I'll be playing yeah, the first three Bloody, Bloody Roar, Roar games." Yeah. Just for once. Retro, retro thing. 4 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday. Mm hmm. All right. So, what we're going to do now, this is a this is an experimental thing. Um, I'm going to go. So, what we're going to do is, because uh, I want to do this like at least once a month. One of the channel member perks I haven't followed up on is member exclusive streams, and I've been trying to figure out how to schedule it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Snooky. Just checked Umbrella. Uh, Super Mario set does come with the work print. Cool. I'm going to check that out now. Uh, so what I want to do today is we're going to end the stream here, and then there's going to be another stream that's going to pop up in about, let's say, let's let's say 7.30 Eastern, so I have some time to go, like, use the bathroom. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and we're going to start that, and it'll be a members-only Ask Me Anything. It's for all member levels, so if you want to join as a member, you can hit the join button down below for as little as $1 will get you into the stream. 
it will be archived later for anybody that's watching these archived, uh, but only for members. So it'll be like a member exclusive live stream. Uh, we'll do it for about 30, 45 minutes. Just do some AMA. Um, so I hope I will see you all there. So if you're a member, you'll get a notification for it when it pops up. Um, but look for it at about uh, 730 Eastern. So in about 14 ish minutes. Um, so we're going to see how that goes and, and test that out. Just to give it a go and see what happens. So. On that note, stay tuned for videos this week. Lots of good stuff coming up. We will be back for our normal live stream, of course, next Monday. Same bat time, same bat channel, maybe not with bat news. And um, that'll be it for this week. And I look forward to seeing you all later. So have a good one.